Welcome everybody to episode 45 of the ADV Podcasts. Five shy of 50. We're talking about something very important today, oh, as really? usual, as really? usual. Um, we're going to be talking about the vaccine uh, situation coming out of mainland China. And it's uh, maybe not what you expect it to be, or it might be exactly what you expect it to be. <laughs> I, I'm probably claim the former, yeah. or the latter, actually. The latter, yeah. Uh, we're, we've also got a bunch of other interesting and relevant topics, but we thought we'd break the ice with something fun. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, let's we just... We always break the ice with something fun. Yeah. No need to intro it. Good. Let's uh, get into our first part, which of course is what's new, uh, where we talk about what's new in China. This is not what's new, by the way. Okay. But there's some stuff in here there's that some is stuff new. that is new what we're going to do is just to break the ice we're going to talk about some very funny english things that uh i personally came across you've come across um and i took photos you know when i first got to china um back in february of 2006 i obviously had a potato cell phone i think i had the motorola v3 or something you know the razor nice. i love that it didn't support chinese characters though and thank goodness it got stolen from me because whoever stole it in China wouldn't have been able to use it anyway. Because, <laughs> you know, you couldn't receive. It just came up with True. black boxes. You know, boxes instead of text. Uh, anyway, I used to, whenever I spotted some funny English, and I did this for the probably the first, uh, say, two, three years that I was there, because it's everywhere. But whenever I spotted something really hilarious, I'd take a photo. So I've got a couple of those to show you guys. We're going to start out with... Um... I, I wanted to make a segue, actually. Okay. Um, I just put out a video mm -hmm. on Law Y86 uh, about... Why do Chinese people pick such ridiculous English names? Right. Very much in line with that. And the, the reason is, is that a lot of people don't understand the full meaning behind names or English words. Yeah. And another thing is, and I was talking to Vivi about this the other day. We're talking about the t-shirt thing. Mm -hmm. To this day, you'll still see crazy t-shirts in China with yeah. just ridiculous English on them. And by and large, even if the person understands what it says, they mm -hmm. haven't even read it. Right. And Vivi was trying to explain this to me. She goes, no one looks at your T-shirt. Nobody reads your T-shirt. It doesn't matter what's on your T-shirt. And that's why people are like, why don't they look it up? What do they not know that's on their shirt? People don't care what's on your shirt. They're not looking, right? Mm -hmm. They legitimately don't look. If you're a Chinese person, they don't care. Nobody's paying attention to you. It's a low trust society thing. Yeah, Strangers that's... are meaningless. I guess so, but also you have to understand that if there's a foreigner walking around with Chinese I characters... I did not say foreigner, I said Chinese No, I, I said, yeah, if there's yeah. a foreigner yeah, walking sure, around sure. with... That's if, if like you or me, mm. here in the States or in any other country, walking around with Chinese characters on mm -hmm. our t-shirt, how many people know what they say? No one. No one. So it, Makes it sense. normally just says something crap like rice or something. For and, sure. And they think it looks cool. Anyway, these are just some of the fun ones. Um, I took this while I was walking to work near where I used to live in Shenzhen. And it says on the back of this uh, woman's T-shirt, I'm the one you got to blow to get a drink around here. <laughs> I, you know what I can tell? You know, we can actually give insight. Okay. This one, I have a feeling was on some like tr like 4XL like tank top for a man, right? Mm -hmm. But in the factory, they just took the print or whatever and sure. copied it over for domestic clothes. Yeah. So, um, you know, I had to snap that. Now, this one actually was in Hong Kong. There's a, what's that, Sai Kong is the place where all the foreigners live and yeah. stuff, right? So I was there. Um, I lived there for a little while. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I was there getting a drink at a bar, and I went to the bathroom. They've got public bathrooms in the parks there. Mm -hmm. Very nice. And it said, uh, female toilet, and right underneath it is a sign that says, no dogs allowed. <laughs> <laughs> Which, you know, obviously it just means don't bring your pets. If you read the Chinese, it actually says don't bring your pets in mm -hmm. with you. Um, but... Just female toilet, no dogs allowed, you know. It's a good placement. <laughs> really good placement, Very good guys. placement, yeah. Okay, anyway, um, what do we got next? Moving on to the next one, guys. Now this, I used to see this all the time, walking around Shenzhen. You'd see these vending machines and it says, Life Jacket Vending Machine. <laughs> and I was like, what the hell is this? Especially when I first got there because I couldn't read Chinese. Right. Basically, they're condom vending machines. Yes. Okay, but the English translation was life jacket vending machines. Well, I mean, the first two characters, this is anquan, which means yeah. safety. So well, obviously, when you put yeah. those together, there was a Baidu translator, some garbage. Yeah. Well, I mean, they call a, a condom like a, a bintal, which yeah. basically means a, a, a disease cover. Jacket. jacket. No, no. <laughs> and uh, anquan. Anquan. No, yeah. not. Yeah. Anquan. Do they call it anquan dizer or anquan I think or it's anquan tao. Anyway. I don't right. have a whole lot of condom experience. I'll be totally sure, honest with but you. Uh, I'm just telling you that, uh, yeah, that's... White Tao. People call yeah. White Tao. Uh, uh, yeah. Tao. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely called an Anshuan Tao as well. So that's a vending machine for condoms. It says life jacket vending machine. So I thought that was pretty hilarious. I mean, in a way, 
yeah, in a way. So. No. <laughs> All right. So this is uh, I mean, we've, we've talked about this before. The reason why I want to bring it up is to the following picture. But this set basically is toothpaste that you'll find in China. Yeah. Uh, around Asia, and specifically in china yeah it's, it's the lower end china. brand yeah. both of us used to use, use it. it all the time uh it's called heiren yagao and heiren yagao is means black man toothpaste like black yeah. person toothpaste and incredibly racist obviously like in, <laughs> in modern times it's right? not as racist to what because the english name now is darley yeah it used to be darky it used to be called darky yeah. toothpaste it that's when it was called, really racist yeah it was called darky toothpaste. but they never changed the chinese name which is heiren yeah. yagao just yeah. black man toothpaste i know now the reason it being is that chinese people think that black people have very white teeth because yeah. of the, the very good the, teeth what's it called the just the contrast the contrast yeah. that's what i meant to say uh, and there's all kinds of jokes, and you'll hear that all the time in China. Mm. Um, something that might shock a lot of black people when they go to China when they no. see Heiren Yagao, black yeah. man toothpaste. But you found in Taiwan, of all yeah, places. Yeah, I was in Taiwan. I was in a in a hotel. And, you know, you get those little, oh, never mind this crap your hands t-shirt, which is hilarious as mm -hmm. well. That I didn't take, by the way. Mm. I found that they had white man toothpaste, wow. which is Byron Yaga, yeah, which so, is like a knockoff of black man toothpaste. Which is funny. Of all places in Taiwan, to get a yeah. knockoff of black man toothpaste, yeah, you get white, white man, man toothpaste. toothpaste. Now, to me, the whole reason that they were going for that contrast thing is that, okay, if you have darker skin, your teeth will look whiter. Mm -hmm. Taiwan kind of threw that out the window, that <laughs> yeah, logic the there. White man toothpaste. There's no contrast left mm. there, guys. Yeah, exactly. What, what kind of computer are you rocking back there? That was a, an Intel Atom, you know, one of those oh, yeah. netbooks when they were still new. This is sure. a long time ago, dude. And anyway, the reason we brought these up is we saw a couple new ones pop up on the internet. We're like, oh, you still had those pictures on yeah, Facebook. Yeah, it's always good because you can come across you can come across these new ones. Oh yeah, you can yeah, come across, sure. but these ones that I actually sure. took myself mm. is more to it because I was there. So here we have the eight eleven and the eight twelve. It's awesome. Better than seven eleven. Yeah, exactly. That was pretty hilarious. You get, get a little more. I wonder if eight twelve is better than eight eleven. Well, I'll tell you what, you know, the 811, when I took that photo, the the woman came running out the like out of there, like, don't, don't yeah. photo, don't photo. You they know, know. Like, the funny thing is people say, oh, they don't know. What are no. you talking about? They don't know. They obviously consciously <laughs> made that. Absolutely. And then 812. Come on. 812 <laughs> is awesome. And you know, the thing is, you, you saw this less and less, okay? Because yeah. start, especially for big brand names, yeah. when they open up in China, if a big brand name that that isn't in China, then it's free game. You can do whatever you yeah, want. Yeah, you can make the fakest McDonald's ever before Canary McDonald's boy. opens. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but if McDonald's actually opens, then suddenly yeah. it's uh, it's a different ballgame. Uh, You've well, got to be careful. You go to the country, so you'll still see fake oh, McDonald's. Oh, yeah, yeah. But Dong the... I went to Dongle King, dude. Yeah. Dongle King had the Burger King logo, and it said Dongle in the middle of the burger instead yeah. of Burger King. Yeah. And I went there, and actually they asked us to film a commercial when we were there for it. But they didn't even sell burgers. They just sold, like, normal Chinese I know, food. it's very, very funny. <laughs> the thing is, these photos were taken in Shenzhen, and that's sure. a first-tier city. So that's the only other city with a stock market in China. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's right top of the pop. So right. if you can still see this in the big cities, yeah, it means they don't take it, it that yeah, seriously. You sure. know? Um, okay, so, yeah, we got 811 and 812. What else we got? <clears throat> uh, oh, yeah. I saw these stickers everywhere, mm. so I snapped this off. This was on the I back still of don't a. Get it. It's on the back of a Mian Bao sure. which is a little sure, bread I mean, van. Yes. <laughs> it's it's basically a little delivery van, and it has like a turkey, and it says, "Hey, don't kick my bottom." <laughs> which I, I don't guess get it. I guess it's kind of like don't bump into me or whatever. Yeah, you I know? guess that makes sense. Why is it a turkey? They don't I, even have turkeys in China. No, I, I really don't know. But a, I little, thought... a little factoid. Actually, factoid means it's not true. A little fact. Okay. They do raise turkeys in Taiwan. Okay. Now, this is a, a new one off the network. Uh, Richland system. Bombers Track and Field Special Olympics. It says... I know, it's e e a, a special. A special they Olympics. even screwed up the Special Olympics. I thought the irony that was That makes it there. legitimate, though. It does. It you does. Know, Someone like, with learning disability. Yeah, probably wrote that down. Right, yeah. the, they had the yeah, Richland Bomber. <laughs> uh, this is a yeah. great one. I like this one. I took this in Huajian Bay, mm. which I think everybody knows is the Silicon Valley of China. And it's mm. one of those... You know, this was right. This I took this picture circa 2007, I guess. Sure. So it's a long time ago. They were still building uh, a lot there. And I just love the fact that it's nice, perfect space. Yes. So the word perfect, which is certainly be, is not yeah. perfect. And it's... I just love the stock <laughs> photo, white guys. Yeah. Like exactly. at a business meeting from like 1997. Yeah. That's my favorite thing. They love... They, you'll find this kind of stuff all over the place, especially for like real estate development yeah. companies. Mm -hmm. On the billboards, it'll be like some random stock white people photo. Yeah, it's pretty funny. Like living in that development, apparently. Uh, and this is probably my favorite. And this is literally the first week I was in China. Yeah. Uh, in Dongmen, you have all those stores, all those buildings that just have random clothes. You mm -hmm. know what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah. About, They're right? all over China. 
So I went up to this one. It's on a mannequin outside a store. You can see the woman try to stop me from taking a photo. Yeah. It says Snoopy. Uh, it's whatever. Copyright Disney. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> Wait, Snoopy's not Disney. Pretty sure it's not. No. Anyway. It's peanuts. Right. And it says, don't break my fucking Beep. nuts. I beeped it. Yeah, okay. Yeah. In lovely cursive writing. Now, that's the kind of thing you'd give to a kid, right? Of course. It's Snoopy, right? But it's... These kind of subs were always used to get my Chinglish t-shirts. Yeah. I thought They're it was so just funny. funny. That's still probably my favorite, just because it's so one. random. That's a good one. Yeah. Okay. And that's then, a good one. <laughs> I went to a, a summer camp in Guangzhou, okay? Mm. Also, this was the end of 2006. For those of you who don't know, um, summer camps are very, mm. very popular. What happens is, in fact... Oh, in, don't remind me. <laughs> oh. In this case, it was mainly uh, children from Hong Kong, okay. okay? And also mainland rich, rich kids. What they do is, during the summer holiday... Obviously, the parents want a break. So what they do is they send them off to these summer camps. And it's basically just an intensive learning thing where they go. And this particular summer camp was all about teaching them computers and robotics and things like that, but also English and all that kind of thing. And they hired a bunch of foreigners. I was fresh off the boat mm -hmm. and I'd just gotten past. I was actually just past where I was homeless. And I'd gotten this job basically through people that I knew. And uh, you go out there and you spend pretty much a month. This was like a month long just looking after the kids. So you have to have all these activities and play with them and mm -hmm. help them with things and do classes with them. And it's like nonstop from morning till night. And it's sure. it's pretty intense. And it was on the university in uh, university grounds in Guangzhou, uh, the finance university or something. And we got to stay in like these kind of dorms that they have set up for teachers there. It's kind of like a mini hotel. Uh, and that's what we would do. And you just wake up in the morning and you have to get all the kids and take them to the, you know, um, cafeteria. Right. You, know the, you know the deal. I've been there. Anyway, during this whole process, I noticed one of the girls, and she's probably 12 years old, wearing a t-shirt. And I was like, what the hell does that say? And I took a photo. It says, Devil Tigress, Hunter of Sex. And you see, like, all around the little border, it says, Hunter of Sex, Hunter of Sex, with exclamation marks. On this little 12-year-old girl, I'm like, yeah, I don't think that's something that you... Uh, well, I used to, you know, whenever kids used to have these t-shirts, I would talk to, if I saw their parents, I would tell them, be like... Listen, this is not very good. You know? sure. It's like, I don't care, but like, maybe you can be a little more careful. Yeah. <laughs> I like this. <laughs> <It's>, so. Yeah. <laughs> 13. So, yeah, nice. it says, says 13, but it actually has For all the 12. people listening yeah, out there, yeah. we're not, yeah. Mm, yeah. Okay, now this is something, again, I bought I bought a set of tools because, you know, I'm uh, one of my hobbies is electronics. Sure. I like tinkering and uh, I'm not very good at it, but, uh, you know, you've got access to all the best kit in shenzhen cheap stuff yeah good so like cheap soldering irons and yeah. all the kind of stuff you need to do electronics and you get a little set of those screwdrivers all the mini heads and yeah. stuff and i bought this and then when i got home i looked at the label and it says weak the brand is weak like as in <laughs> w-e-a-k weak and it says weak professional electronic <laughs> tools it's like that's not what you want your brand you know what I mean? Yeah. If you, it's just they're trying to. They actually try to translate the actual alliteration there. Yeah. Because it's like first, or something. Or it that. says no. K is the second character. The okay. first one's such a mess. Mm. But it's like K, like weak K. You know what I mean? But weak right. is shu ro. Yeah, like like, it's, like way it's, K. Yeah. 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 Anyway, it's lame. I don't know if they saw like tough tools or something and thought like, well, yeah. let's let's, let's copy weak. that, but you know, be we'll different. Be the opposite. But I just thought that was hilarious because whenever I needed to work it's, on something, it's I'd, actually not wrong. I'd pull out my weak. Yeah, but yeah, it's not no. wrong. Yeah, they were pretty, All those tools pretty are weak. Awful. It was really weak. It, they they did break. Um, <laughs> <laughs> two different people, by the way, that I filmed uh, or took photos of. The second guy, I ran after him because he walked past while I was having a drink. You know, at like sure. a little thing. I was like, dude, I got to take a photo of your t-shirt in Chinese. He's like, okay, and he smiled. You can see there. But, he's a good sport. Yeah, he is a f good sport. The the guy on the left, though, I still don't really understand. I guess I just don't want to know what his music collection's all about. Yeah, yeah. Because it basically says F in useless music. Yeah. And then the other guy's t-shirt just says F off. Right. I mean, he couldn't speak any English. I'm pretty sure you'd know what that means, though. He probably would. Probably, probably but yeah. He anyway. probably loved it. Probably. I mean, you think about it. Like, you can if you say swear words in a different language, it doesn't mean that much. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, so that's, that's the true. same for them. It's like... You'll hear kids running around saying the F word all the time. Yeah. <laughs> this might be my second favorite one. That's that's a good one. And, that's a good uh, one. I was, Smile if you're gay. Again, I was walking to work with my, my friend. Um, and uh, I, I saw this woman in front of us with this T-shirt. And it's got some very small text on it. So you have to get kind of close to read it. Yeah. 
And when I saw it, I just nudged my friend and said, look there. And he, he just packed out laughing. So right. it's like, it says smile if you're gay That's in very small like yeah. letters. And That's a good one. You can't help but smile if you see that because it's so absurd. It's I, funny. I wanted to, somebody threw a, threw a uh, message here in the chat. They yeah. said, if you think weak is a bad brand name, imagine if your name was Microsoft. <laughs> <laughs> so that's pretty, yeah that's, that's, that's true. pretty good that's a good point oh you know what's even funnier what in south africa there was a company that sell, sold hardware they called themselves micro hard did they really yeah oh. but it's still small yeah <laughs> i would call it like massive hard or something yeah exactly so by the way there's a ripoff microsoft brand in china called michael soft yeah michael soft yeah. yeah i remember that uh, this is actually a weather lady yeah this i didn't china take, yeah. mm -hmm. um the weather lady in china soft tv yeah and uh, it looks to be like her shirt is a very ripoff version of Tigger. Yeah. And it says effing above it for all the people listening out there. Now, she was on TV wearing this shirt. My biggest thing is maybe you don't understand the word. Yeah. In this case, probably not, right? Yeah. This pretty young lady, she's on TV. My biggest problem with this is why this shirt? You're a weather woman on TV. You're not going to wear like such a scummy looking crap shirt. Right. That's like right. a five R&B shirt. Yeah. That, well, you don't wear that on TV as a meteorologist. No, no standards, I guess, on this. It's probably a small regional TV sure. station. I, I mean, think it's hilarious. But You've seen that uniforms and stuff don't actually matter. Yeah. If you've yeah. ever seen like the security guards all getting together yeah. for their drills, they look so shabby. Right. You know, they've got yeah. like shirts hanging out. Yeah. They're all dirty it's and never over, been washed. They're always and, oversized surplus. Yeah, exactly. It's just nonsense. The only time you see anyone taking care of the uniforms and stuff is when it's for like the, the national parade or something. You're going to be, yeah, you know, like part of a big thing. Stuff. Yeah. But yeah, mm. so she passed the vibe check. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't know these. Flower Aroma Tour. I found you at last. The world which it sounds like it listens and the melody to add warmth gradually is innocent so this is in this guy's shirt says the pig is full of many many cats That's now the thing what happens the one on the left is actually in japan you can see it's what happens yen, yen yeah what happens is in these scenarios is you'll get people that just want english words on a shirt right it doesn't have to mean or say anything interesting yeah it's just kind of different and cool. yeah it's just kind of exotic yeah anyway yeah, okay that was fun so what is new um well you have media there don't you well <laughs> No, those are all our funnies, aren't they? I guess we can move into... Oh, you missed... You missed oh, I missed one. You missed Sorry. one. But... Okay, let's get back Okay, to we'll it. do one more. We'll, do, we'll one. do one more. This one says, Casio. I love cash, alcohol, sound, intellectuals, omelette. Omelette. Okay, <laughs> up, up until omelette, I was... That could have been a proper legitimate yeah. t-shirt, which is yeah. kind of interesting. I mean, omelettes but, are good. Yeah, okay. And this IE... Um, it says chocolate, French fries, hot dog, ice cream, pizza, milkshake. Mil milkshake, <laughs> milkshake, yeah. Milkshake. MLK, shay. Yeah, <laughs> milkshake. Martin Luther King, King shay. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so right. mm. uh, let's talk about this. Yeah. Uh, a while back, actually, it was only last month, I did a video where I talked about how the YouTube moderation system, when they decide if a video is kosher or not, yeah. if it's okay for ads or not, uh, if it's going to be promoted or not, if it's going to be successful or not, what they do is nowadays instead of letting a computer deal with it if you're a big enough youtube channel they will have a person go into your video before you release it yeah well, it's just unlisted and they'll check to make sure it's okay but before that happens you have to fill out a survey yes. every time you yes. upload a little behind the scenes you have to fill it out is it violent is it sexual is yeah. it profanity is it blah, does it blah, discuss blah, sensitive, sensitive topics, topics you blah, know blah 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 and you know, more often than not, our videos are not any of those things. Sure. So we'll click none of the above. Or if it's something mild, we'll click. We'll be honest about it. Every single time now, I pretty much, just to save my own skin, I tick a couple of them. I say, discusses some sensitive topics, sure. things like that. But, you know, and it probably is detrimental to my views because I think it classes it as maybe potentially, you know, dangerous. Mm. But as long as you're honest about what you're talking about, usually That's, they... Yeah, I was they, say, it's not true. I mean, because, usually yes, yeah. what they do is they will kind of review your thing, depending on what you've ticked. And if it meets the guidelines, they're like, okay, it can be monetized, sure. right? But Now, so yeah. what happened was I had a couple of videos where they were getting... They would go be approved. Like the YouTube moderator would say, it's okay, mm. totally fine, release the video. Mm -hmm. I release the video. A week later, two weeks later sometimes, happened on ADV China as well. Mm. It'll come back, and both these times it said that it was because of video game violence. Yeah, well, we've which never showed video no games. video games in the videos. It's not even, there's no violence mm -hmm. in the videos. So I made a video about it, and mm -hmm. I talked about it on China Uncensored as well. Yeah. Brought it up there. 
And we thought that bringing some attention to it might actually help out. I right. actually think it might have. But what happened was, and this is, by the way, this was on my video called Taiwan is a Country. It has nothing to do with violence. Yeah, and it had nothing it, to do with video, video games. games. Anyway, mm. so um, my point being is that we waited a while and everything was okay. But your recent video, yeah. which is in the next slide here, you can explain what happened here. Okay, so guys, we we got hit with this these very yeah. random... you got to understand... They demonetized videos, but for the wrong reasons, mm. okay? Because there is nothing against the terms of service in the videos. Mm. So they made up stuff like they did with our one where we visited the Tiananmen Square yeah. um, memorial thing, you know, this, yeah. the Freedom um, Sculpture Park yeah. out in Yermo. So we went there and because it was talking about the Tiananmen Square thing, that's a very sensitive topic for the CCP and for the Chinese nationalists. And as such, they mass flag the crap out of the video, right? Sure. Not only that, we do suspect that there are people that are uh, either being overly cautious or perhaps sympathetic to the CCP working mm. inside it's, Google. It's most likely just overly cautious. Overly cautious, either way. So they went and demonetized it and said it was because of video game footage, which of course yeah. there is no video, video game footage. Same thing with your one about Taiwan mm. because it's such a sensitive issue. Yeah. Now last week, I did a video called Traitors Working for the Chinese, uh, the Communist Chinese Government, mm -hmm. question mark. Which if you haven't seen, it's an hour long, it's a long video, but I go, I do a it's bit of a it. deep yeah. dive into the Western YouTubers that parrot CCP propaganda, denigrate the West, and also are tied to the Chinese Communist Party via, you know, doing travel shows and, and promotional videos and government fluff pieces and uh, tourism stuff. Which, by the way, can I point something out here? Right now, and for the, since the beginning of the year, you can't travel to China for tourism. No. It's just not possible. Even if you can get to China because you just happen to be not on the naughty list of countries, you still have to quarantine there for, you know, like now it's been bumped up from 14 days to like 21 days or something. something like that. Either way, why would you be promoting tourism when there is no tourism, when international tourism isn't a thing right now and the, can't the be country's a The getting more and more locked yeah. down again. So the idea of promoting tourism is bollocks. They're not promoting tourism. They're promoting what the government has achieved. They're promoting an image of how amazing the Chinese government is. So anyway, I mean, a couple of these guys are excusing the uh, concentration camps. Oh, in yeah, Xinjiang, yeah, by yeah, the way, absolutely. saying they're a good thing. Well, they, w they just went very political. And like I said, parroting CCP, uh, parroting their talking points, their propaganda, and at the same time, parroting the attacks against the West. They all went on the attack for all the same things. They're like, oh, democracy is so bad. Look, look at the Hong Kong riots and the Capitol building thing. They're putting those things together when yeah. they're actually not at all joined in any way. They're doing all the, oh, the Huawei Princess Meng, you know, the mm. Meng Wanzhou is, did nothing wrong. You know, Huawei did nothing wrong. CCP did nothing wrong. The, the virus, they're all questioning if the virus came from China or not, trying to dissuade people from thinking that it did come from them, right? That kind of thing. So it's all a bunch of nonsense, really. Okay. Now, <clears throat> these uh, guys... Obviously, this traitor thing that it's not just them. There are a lot of YouTubers and there are a lot of YouTube channels like Li Zixi and things like that, which are absolutely China's soft power. And they're being pushed on YouTube and other Western platforms which are banned and forbidden within China. Mm -hmm. So it just raises a lot of questions. And I think it's a bit of a sensitive topic because when I it tried is. to release that, it got, as you can see, limited ads for let me read it for you. Focus on accidents, pranks, or stunts that have health risks, like drinking or eating non-edibles, or discussion of trending videos that show this type of content. Now, what? <laughs> maybe it's because of the vegetable dance and they're eating vegetables, and maybe because this is somehow, so dangerous. somehow they know that those vegetables are actually full of carcinogens <laughs> or something. But that's the only thing I could think of. YouTube's smart. Yeah. No, but quite seriously, <laughs> there's, about it there's nothing about <laughs> pranks and accidents and stunts in that video. Right. Unless it's like they're doing these stunts for the Chinese government, maybe. And there's nothing about eating or drinking non-edibles in the no. video either. No. So, obviously, that was a big blow to me that this hour-long video that took me a week to put together and, you know, make sure I had all my ducks in a row. So, what I did was at the 11th hour, I didn't release it. I exported it again, okay, and I re-uploaded it again. And this time, you know where you self-criticize? Because, by the way, self-criticism is a, it's a thing. huge part of Chi communist Chinese government mm -hmm. where you have to, like, write down confessionals mm -hmm. of what you've done. 
um, you know, anyway, and wear a dunce cap or whatever. Mm. Now, I, I self confessed to anything I thought that might even slightly be sensitive about the video. I said, yeah, there's discussion about some sensitive topics. There's discussion of this. There might sure. be some bad language. I think I said the word bell end and bullshit or something. So very small. Sure. Um, so I did all of this and I re-released it. It got manually reviewed and it was okayed. So it just goes to show that there's something screwy going on. Yeah, I mean, we're, I've talked to some people about yeah. this. And it does look like that YouTube is just super overly cautious and the way that the moderation works is it, but it's very much inherently broken. And the yeah. problem with that is is that you can't have something manu manually reviewed and then just renege on that just because you get a bunch of flags. So that's why we keep bringing this up. Yeah, It's not so much like, oh, poor us, whatever. It's that there's something wrong inside mm -hmm. of here and I need we need YouTube to be super transparent about yeah. it because there's something going on. Yeah, there's either we're getting flagged 100,000 times by nationalists and the entire Chinese government over there. Yeah. Or, you know, something's broken inside and we, we need YouTube to tell us why and what's going on. Because it's just, I mean, three times, three or four times, uh, four times now. Where it's completely lies, nothing. It's co that, that's absolutely a lie. wrong. You know, um, they need to be as transparent as your cap. Yes. Because I don't know why you take always some, take some notes, YouTube. Stupid transparent cap every My time. My hair's too wild right now. Don't, don't you have another cap? It's green as well. Okay. Got green on it. <laughs> Dai Liu Mao's. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> anyway, guys, um, uh, that's what's new. We're gonna have to get into our main thing. No, before we do, we have a couple of super chats. chats. Yeah, let's hit those super chats, shall we? Stern teacher. She looks like a stern teacher. Mm -hmm. Those naughty communists themselves should be re-educated. Could the West use the idea of losing face against the CCP, or would it make them more hostile? I mean, yeah, that's that's definitely a thing. It's the only way to make the Chinese government learn is to make them lose face. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, that's how it works. Yeah. And yes, it would make them more hostile for sure. Yeah. But I think we're past that point now, guys. Mm -hmm. uh, Tornado brick, Winston. What nationality or passport will you go for? Well, I only go one for? to choose. <laughs> only one to choose, I... my, my man. I can't go for anything other than what I have, you know, yeah. unfortunately. I have the option of going through an ancestral visa to the UK, but it takes seven years of my life and it's uh, not particularly where I'd like to end up at this stage of my life, you know. Because think about it, I'm 40, so I'll be close to 50 if I manage to pull it off. And that means I have to live in, and work in England for seven odd years. And it's not that easy either. I have to dig up birth certificates of my grandparents, marriage certificates and all sorts of crap. And um, it's not easy. It's a lot of paperwork, it's very expensive, and it's a long endeavor, so that's an option. Probably just stick it out here. Yeah. Um, I, yeah. Becoming an American citizen is actually harder and impossible, really, especially on my current visa. Mm. People don't realize how tough the immigration into America is if you do it legally. Mm -hmm. In fact, you know, I've been accused of being uh, having an anchor baby, because my daughter is American, she was born here. But I think anyone who's trying to accuse me of that doesn't understand how immigration works. Do you realize that your child... She can be American, but the only time she can sponsor you for a green card is when she turns 21. Mm. So that's a really dumb idea if I, if I were to think, oh, just go to America and have an anchor, baby. Because that means I'd be 60 by the time I can even apply for a green card. It's the dumbest thing ever. So I'm going to be like some gray-ass old 60-year-old man riding around drunk or something with, yeah. you know, trying to apply for a green card. I don't think so. So it's, it's tough. So I'm South African, unfortunately, by nationality. I'm just going to have to stick with it for now. Right. Mm. Certainly, we have a lot of uh, Wu Mao's in the chat. Oh, we do. Uh, Mr. Scarab says, love your work. Keep spreading the truth and stay awesome. Thank you very much. Oh, yeah. Uh, Urigan Schelling, thank you. you. Citizen of Symphonia, I had to write 20 mm. comments to muster up this donation, but the content is worth it. Wow. Keep up the good work, guys. Thank you. Appreciate thank you so that. much. Jonathan Lau, I'm ver personally very disappointed by Biden's first 24 to 48 hours. He rejoined the WHO and Paris Accords which will make the CCP stronger. Your thoughts? Well, I mean, the thing about leaving the WHO, it's a slippery slope. I also agree it's a horrifically corrupt organization. Yes. It also, without the US in it, gives much more power to China mm. in the CCP that they can be like the basically well, the I think it was, it. wasn't it a basically a retaliation because the WHO was basically an agent for China. Yeah. And America has been contributing the most yeah. to That's the, the WHO. So right. when, when you have 
so much money coming from America into an organization that's actively working against the America mm-hmm. together with the Communist Party of China. It's a slap in the face. It is. Why? I agree. Why should you be a part of that organization? I think we need to take control of the organization. Is what uh, needs it's to not happen. about taking control. It's about hold, holding people accountable. That's a, yeah. Taking control, holding people accountable, making yeah. sure that people that screw up have to deal with it. Yeah. Uh, Jimmy Valchuchik. Val, Val Kuchik, uh, what do you guys think about semiconductor shortage that is going on right now affecting auto manufacturing and tech? Do you all think it's something related to China? Uh, probably. Who knows? Find uh, other suppliers. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I'll do a couple Look more. into that more uh, for you. Case Close 93. You know what I just figured out? Winston and President Joe Biden have something in common. They both love to say, my wife is a doctor. <laughs> okay. That's... Nice. Emmanuel Turnin. Uh, here's some beer money to get... Oh, Nice. To get uh, eighteen day Taiwan beer. That's the best. Love it. I love that stuff. We'll yeah. Certainly drink a lot of that. Good. And Ergen Schelling, I'm not Chinese and tried the vaccine and it works. Sinofac is the best. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. Um, All right. So we got a Wu Mao. Rugen Schelling. So we have a Wu Mao, more like Schilling. Yeah. It's either a Wu Mao or a joke, because yeah. we're we're gonna flip that on its head. Yeah. So anyway, guys, Soft Power Hour is our segment where we talk about what the Chinese government is doing to try and convince you of its greatness, and it's usually through Kind of deceptive, underhanded means, to be honest. Mm -hmm. Or taking advantage of the free speech of the West to use it against the West. So we're going to be talking about the vaccine. Now, this is more in Seamilk's wheelhouse, (laughs) to be honest, because he loves medicine and vaccines and stuff. I love them. It's your thing. I'm interested in medicine, yeah. Yeah, Yeah, super much. And for me, it's... Super much. Yeah, super much, man. You used to carry, like... You know, pharmacy. pharmacy in your pockets. And I helped everyone out in my path. <laughs> yes. I'm like a barefoot doctor. Yeah, yeah. You're kind of like a I'm traveling. Like a pocket doctor. You're, you're traveling, yeah, whatever it is. Um, I keep getting a call. I'm just going to send a, um, so can I call you later, text and see what happens. Sure. Mm-hmm. I'll just, whatever that okay. is. It doesn't matter. Sorry, guys. We Not normally important. don't interrupt. It's unimportant. Not important. Uh, yeah. So anyway, he's more well versed into this. You know, I also found out that my parents didn't vaccinate me when I was growing up, which is nice. But, um, <laughs> but you know, what's what, wrong with what happened? I think that they got a big scare, you know, during during their sort of time. There was that. What was that medicine they gave to pregnant women oh, that right. kind of alleviated supposed to yeah. alleviate symptoms ended up causing a lot of birth defects sure. and stuff. It has nothing to do so, with vaccines. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's like a hangover. It's kind of the shit. medicine thing. Anyway, the fact of the matter is I still did get vaccinated by my school. Yeah, you We're, still got some uh, vaccines. Yeah, against their wishes. They're really pissed off about it, yeah. apparently. But, you know, what? I am vaccinated basically for, for, I think, like TB and hepatitis C or whatever Good. it is and all Good. that stuff. So I am vaccinated. But the fact of the matter is um, vaccination is something that's never really been a focus of my life. Sure. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> as, now, much, now my... as much as it has yours. Um, my kid, by the way, is fully vaccinated. We've been, you know, vaccinated. We've been following up on that because I do believe that it's important to not let stuff like polio and measles and stuff come back. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah, amongst many other things. Yeah. Anyway. So I'm kind of one of those damned if you do, damned if you don't kind of guys. I'm on the fence. I'm not like 100% for vaccines. I'm also not 100% against vaccines. I'm somewhere in the middle. Maybe at some point I can talk about what's happening. Yeah. So please. <laughs> Thanks for I, your answer. I, I mean, the whole point is I want people to know that you're, if, if we're going to talk about vaccines, you're the guy. I'm the guy. Thanks. So what do we got well, over here? Okay, cool. Mm. Um, let me tell you about my vaccine. <laughs> Just joking. Okay. I've been vaccinated against everything, even more than you. <laughs> I know you have. Uh, so. Going to get a vaccination against sea milk. <laughs> <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. Not, it hasn't passed trials yet. Yeah, exactly. So the COVID-19 vaccine, uh, you guys have obviously been reading a lot about that. You can't avoid it in the news. Uh, we have dueling vaccines all around the world. It's like dueling, what is that? Dueling banjos, <laughs> yeah, yeah. dueling vaccines. Yeah. And the problem is, is that they have different efficacy rates, sure. just like anything else. And basically, you guys probably know how the, the RNA versus the traditional vaccines work. But more or less, the traditional vaccine tricks your body into thinking, oh, I'm kind of a little bit sick with this vac- or with this virus. I'm going to make antibodies against it. Right? Yeah, that's where they just take the shells, the correct, dead shells of a, of a virus. That's the old school version. Mm. Now, actually, it still can be effective against coronaviruses, even though people were skeptical, mm. because uh, some of the vaccines that were being developed have worked against that. The problem is, is that China did a very traditional, normal, normal sure. immunity vaccine, like like we're talking about right now, mm-hmm. and they had a couple companies working on that. 
Now the issue is they rushed it and they were like, we're going to be the first first people to get it out there because not only do they want people, everyone around the world to think that coronavirus didn't come from China, but they also want to be the first country to say we claim victory over it. And then also to say, oh, we cured the world of it as well. So you can see a lot of this, like it's very easy to call bullshit on what China has been doing. Mm -hmm. It came from China, right? And that's very imperative that we understand that because then we can know and prevent it in the future. But they block everyone from coming in to see the origins, coming in to see the lab, sure. coming in to see all this kind of stuff, all the speculation, to see the wet market, to see the blah, blah, blah. They block all of these independent uh, world powers and mm-hmm. investigators from doing that in an effort to sway the opinion. So 10, 20, 50 different excuses now. It's coming on auto parts manufacturing. It's coming on frozen food. Now we've found an ice cream. Mm-hmm. Oh, actually, it's from Fort whatever in America. Sure. Oh, now it's from India. Now it's from Japan. They're trying to make people like confused and maybe sure. just not even care about it anymore, to be mm-hmm. honest. I think it's just when they put all this into the zeitgeist, people are like, oh, whatever, it's, we have to deal with it. Mm-hmm. Long story short, they were also the first to come up with this, this vaccine, right? Yeah. Well, according to them. The problem is, is that they were claiming a 78% efficacy rate, which is not good, no. by the way. Um, and the reason that they were doing that was so that they could ship it to a bunch of different countries that were lined up. They weren't going to get the American one in time. They weren't going to get the Russian one in time or whatever country, or the UK one. Mm-hmm. Um, so they, these countries, a lot of these countries like Turkey and Brazil and all this kind of stuff, they were like, let's let's just do the China one. You know, mm-hmm. we got good relationships with China. Problem is, if you uh, scroll forward a little bit, we'll come back to this in a minute. Okay, so we'll get back. To scroll this. forward to this. Uh, this slide, the date is back, unfortunately. Keep going, keep going. Keep going, all right. Keep going, keep going. The date is back. And the Brazil results, who's one of the first countries to get it outside of China. Because, by the way, China's claiming that it's working, like, brilliantly. Sure, right? sure. Brazil gets it, and it's 50.4% effective. Yeah. Compare this to 90 to 95% effective for the American vaccines. Hmm very very poor results sure it was so, rushed it's it's not developed properly we know china chabadoa yeah. chabadoa means just good enough and that's mm. base is not even good enough it's not no, even it's, not enough, it's just yeah. shit why even bother getting the vaccine and at if that it's only, point you know you're flipping a coin so whether I, it's going to work or not. yeah mm. i called this a couple weeks ago and people were like no don't be doom and gloom i'm not being doom and gloom i just mm. know how china does things sure and if there's so much government initiative to hide where it came from and the fact that it didn't come from there what do you think they're going to do with the actual vaccine yeah you're talking about a country where the, where the hygiene standards allow this something like this to happen in the first place sure. pandemics come out of china all the time yeah what do you think they're going to do with a vaccine okay mm. it's just simple logic and then go back to those black slides that I, that I had up there so if you look at the first one the usa which has developed you know some of the vaccines here we have third uh third place in the COVID data transparency index and i love this kind of stuff i'm a big yeah. data boy these data points basically ranked all the countries on how transparent they were with testing, management, usage, coverage, all that kind of stuff. Sure. And although America, by and large, didn't handle the the coronavirus very well as a pandemic, sure, they were transparent about it, and they can deal they can they can deal with it in terms of testing facilities and all that kind of stuff. They have the facilities to do that. They don't try to hide things, right? Sure. So only second to Belgium and Norway. Mm. Whereas you go down the list, and again, this is, this is just data. It's hard facts. China is 96. So China is fifth from the bottom of yeah. the entire world in the coronavirus cover-up. So you're talking about a country that developed a vaccine, trying to push it on other countries for profit, right? Yeah. Or actually just in the long term to say, oh, we saved your ass, sure. you stupid little country. Yeah. But you're also talking about a country that is one of the worst in the entire world for being transparent about the entire pandemic. Even if you get rid of all this ideas about where it came from or whatever, sure. it's one of the worst players on the entire global playing field. Yeah, look, North Korea is the worst. It is, yeah, you'd expect. for sure. Um, Turk, Turk, Turkmenistan. Which is also, which is literally just as bad as North Korea. It's yeah. also a dictatorship. Yeah, that's the second worst. Serbia kind of surprised me. Yeah. They're a vast Third worst, China. then Turkey, Yeah, and, and then, then China. China. Algeria and Egypt are more transparent and open about it than China. <laughs> Iran, so Iran and Belarus. And Cameroon and Uzbekistan and Ethiopia. So the country where it came from and mm-hmm. developed this magical vaccine, are we surprised by the results here? No, no we're not. No. And this is, you can put it on Hua Chunying now. Oh, yeah. We'll have a little talking point. He was blocked me on Twitter ages ago before she I did. even talked to her. She did. Mm. So this is the new thing is that mm. um, they're putting out a bunch of news, mm. a bunch of press statements and stuff 
talking about how effective the Chinese vaccine is. Sure. When we've already got the empirical evidence. By the way, there's a lot of, uh, oh my gosh, it's amazing. This, sorry, this gets me so excited. Okay. Yeah. But when I was on Reddit and, and all the forums looking up like data, not data from Reddit, but I want to see what people were talking about. Sure. There were so many Wu Mao's out and their their main goal in there is to say that's bullshit like it's this is the wrong the white people put out these news articles which are racist sure. this is white people news and actually in china we know that it's that's totally effective and they sure. saw this over and over again and what i noticed was people were coming back in with just facts and logic and saying no this this is from a chinese publication yeah it's from a chinese publication that had the data points for the efficacy of the virus of sure. the vaccine sure and then they're like, oh, they just shut down. They can't say anything at this yeah. point. So the Wumas are now being forced out like crazy to shit on any other Western vaccine and to make sure people think that the, the data points are wrong. Yeah. That the 50% of his efficacy rates lies, right? Sure, sure. Hua Chunying amongst her whole horde, I can call them a horde, right? Sure. Horde of wolf wanker diplomacy people. <laughs> yeah. Their new thing is, this is what they're saying. Europe and Australia, because these these are continents that are in line for vaccines, right? Yeah. Europe and Australia should reject the hasty American vaccines linked to elderly deaths, which has been proven wrong, by the Absolutely, way. Absolutely, yeah. Linked to elderly deaths, Chinese scientists say. Western media refuses to investigate the dangers of Pfizer and BioNTech shot, fumed a state, uh, state television anchor. So they were just going ape shit. Yeah. And, uh, and you had Hua and all these people out there. Uh, on the offense mm. saying listen shut up chinese vaccine is your only hope it's yeah. the best and it's all over chinese media right now i think it's very good people should take notice if they're watching yeah. china right now the amount of soft power surrounding their vaccine i think you'll notice in our comment section right now you're yeah. seeing this yeah uh, right now it's a directive by the chinese government to suppress this kind of information because their narrative is crumbling right the narrative that they first of all controlled the virus which isn't true because people are going back into lockdown right now mm. in china okay mm. we've got people on the ground i like to say that word ro <laughs> rolling around <laughs> on the ground in china that are telling us that their area their dormitory their city their whole province is currently under serious lockdown there's mass testing and all this kind of stuff because there's been a couple of breakouts obviously it's the season when yeah. it's going to happen yeah sure okay it's happened more or less uh well anyway basically what what i'm trying to say is that they haven't got a beat but anything that comes out that kind of talks about them not having a beat is being attacked viciously right now by the 50 cent army and you're seeing that in our comment section right now you're seeing that with anyone who's trying to talk about actual facts so the chinese the sinovac vaccine sucks okay it really does it's get a, got a 50.4 yeah. yeah sinopharm 50.4 efficacy rate in brazil and then that's not china so they can't change the statistics that's the thing. Within China, it could get like a 1% efficacy rate, but they can tell the world that it's 100%. And no one can dispute that. No. But when it's outside the borders of China, like Brazil, and they're just reporting what it's actually doing, they can't stop them. They can't no. censor them. They can try to pressure them with economic stuff or whatever, but they can't actually say to them, no, tell them it's 100%. Tell right. them it's 80%. It doesn't work that way. So no. what do they do? They mobilize the disinformation bots, the 50 cent army, the actual, you know, branches of the military that are there for changing opinion online. They have this whole cyber warfare thing. They've got it down pat. That's how they suppress other YouTubers like us. That's how they boost people that are spreading the right message for them. Any Westerner that goes out there trumpeting the CCP talking points gets boosted, supported, lots of engagement. Yeah. And anyone who talks against them gets hammered, you know, like we do. We, we experience this all the time. But the fact of the matter is the truth is the biggest enemy of the CCP. Yeah. You know? Well, it's, it flies in the face of everything they do. Absolutely, yeah. It, Winston, I hate to say this, mm. and I'm not trying to be cocky, but we've been pretty much spot on about everything in the past, I mean, usually about China, but in the past year or mm. two. Yeah. Um, it's just so predictable what they're doing right now. Yeah. And unfortunately, I think it's working because either mm. people are tired of it yeah. or the soft power actually works. Yeah. And I'm going to make some predictions here. Okay. The Chinese vaccine is being touted in China as being, it's the, it's the it's savior, right? It's amazing. It's amazing. Yeah. We fixed this. Even if other countries don't buy into it, right? Yeah. This is what China's going to do. They already know at the top leadership that it doesn't work. Mm. Okay. They already know this. What's going to happen is 
secretly and silently, you're gonna see more and more, more than the 7 million we already saw of the Pfizer vaccine, the Moderna vaccine, all these other vaccines being shipped to China. And you know where they're gonna go? They're gonna to go to the PLA, the People's Liberation Army, and the Communist Party elite. Yeah. And that's exact. why do you think they already got 7 million doses? It's for the top elites. It's not for kids, it's not for elderly, it's for the top elite in China. Because they know, yeah. everyone in China knows that anything made there is not good. Do yeah. you understand? That's why they buy German cars. Yeah. That's why they go study abroad at Harvard and other things. That's why they get Australian milk powder. That's why they get Australian milk powder, especially anything tied to health. Mm. They know that they don't trust the domestic products because of all the scandals that kill the own citizens in their own country. Yeah, the vaccine thing's real. They've you already know, had scandals. Yeah, my daughter had, was affected by the vaccine scandal yeah, in China. Multiple vaccine scandals while I lived in China. And my wife, being a doctor, had to deal with this every time. Yeah. And it's true that when people come in for vaccinations for their children, they get they get an option yeah. of a local vaccine. Yeah, we are Guane, yeah, Guane we are. or, you know, Jinko, yeah, you know, like Jinko. it comes from outside. So imported. And everybody chooses imported. They don't, unless you're, unless a, you're like dumb, very, very, very poor. Yeah. Like the poorest of the poor, because it's almost free. The local ones are like a couple of RMB, right? Sure. So unless you're incredibly poor, you will never choose the locally made vaccine. And that's because it's just been proven over and over again to be unreliable. Yeah. Either it doesn't work and it's fake, which we've had fake ones. Saline solution. Yeah, saline solution. Or it's been expired or not stored in a refrigerated area because it was in someone's flat. And it could potentially be dangerous. Yes, it can be dangerous. Um, Yeah, so look, they don't trust the local vaccines. Now, not only did they import that seven odd million yeah. to, to bring in, obviously, to vaccinate the people that need it, but, mm. you know, the higher ups, I should mm. say, but they're going to obviously try to reverse engineer it and then sell it as their own and look, oh, look, China came up with a, a better vaccine. It's going to be just the Pfizer one. That's a good a, call. A generic. That's a good mm. call. Yeah. Absolutely. Anyway, that we just wanted to, I, I hate, you know what, this is the thing. Mm. I feel like people out there are going to be looking at us sometimes being like, oh, they're, they're often right about mm. this kind of stuff. And that must, you know, it's kind of kind of like gloating a little bit. But mm. This is something I want to be wrong about. Mm. I want people around the world to have proper vaccines. Sure. I think everyone does. And then we can nip this freaking pandemic in the bud, right? Yeah. But unfortunately, vaccine diplomacy, something I called a year ago that was going to happen. I knew this was going to happen. Sure. Became a reality. Mm. And China dropped the ball yet again. They dropped the ball with the pandemic in the beginning. And they dropped the ball with the vaccine now. And they're trying to convince the world that they're going to save it. The fact that they were never transparent from the beginning and haven't let the WHO and independent researchers come in to try and test the area from where patient zero came from, come in and try it's to study. It's important to stop it in the future. Yeah. I mean, it has delayed the process of the vaccine insurmountably just because they won't allow people in to help. Right. It's not people coming in to say, China, you suck. It's your fault. Because we all know, we know, it's, it we know it's China's we know it fault. Came from China. It doesn't matter where it came from in China. It came from China. Yeah, exactly. The fact of the matter is that if we were to look at it as like a global effort to let's stop this uh, virus and develop a, a vaccine, China's really put a lot of walls in place and blocked progress. On purpose. Yeah, on purpose. And I think people should not forget that. Right. You know? Are we are we the only people like to, like bring this up? Come on, guys. So <laughs> yeah. little data comparison here. Mm. There is something going around. This is a, a magical thing about what we do, I think, is that we can always tell yeah. you what's happening in China in terms of like public opinion. Yeah. So when we talk to people, the whole thing that's going around right now, I just spoke to a couple of people yesterday. Yeah. By the way, Je- Jesse is our moderator. Can you get rid of any Chinese comments in Chinese? The reason being, this is an English language um, podcast. And what if happens you, if you write something in Chinese with English and stuff, that's fine. But if it's excluding anyone, here's the thing. 99% of all the Chinese messages that come up are just Wu Mao copy and paste yeah. nonsense. Okay. And that's why I say, if you've got a point to make, whether you be a Wu Mao or not, please put it in English sure. so that um, the basic, like the, the general audience can read it too. Don't put it in Chinese, please, because we don't go to your videos in Chinese and leave English comments. That's rude. Sure. All right. And it's not about anything other than just being transparent. If you want to put little Chinese messages in. It's totally fine. Message, it's totally it's fine. It's totally okay. But if you're putting a wall of text yeah. in Chinese. Yeah. Most people can't read it. So no, it's not fair to them. Get lost. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, hmm. the whole point is people can look to us to talk about um, what what's happening in China. Still, do you know why? Because people still talk to us all the time about yeah. this stuff. And I was curious about the feelers. Yeah. 
The current feeling in China right now is that everyone is getting vaccinated. There's all these news stories right now, and people are ta even talking about it in their groups. Like, well, yeah. they know someone he here that got vaccinated. They know someone here that got vaccinated. Well, yeah. we're currently, if you guys go to this website, it's called howmanyvaccinated.com. Yeah. You can put it in any country, any state or whatever, and it's live feed. Yeah. Right now, as of right before I put this media kit together, um, the U.S. is at 5.4. That guy's like uh, Rugo Weigler and Yong Jongwen. Uh, Bukayma. <laughs> like, dude. <laughs> just stop all right sorry all right, it doesn't it, matter don't pay just, attention just to that. anyway sorry no. continue <laughs> so um anyway we're here yeah and looking at this data point here so as of now it's 5.48 percent vaccinated in the u.s let me skip forward okay so this is this is how how up to date is this information uh, within the past two hours okay so within the past two hours so China has 1.13 percent. Now, with all this mass vaccination, oh my gosh, we just vaccinated 800,000 people. Oh, we did this, we did this, and this, and this. This number is going up, by the way. It's not delayed. Yeah, um, they are reporting as much as they can. Sure, it's still behind, even with its crap vaccine, mm. massively behind most of the rest of the world. Yeah, I mean they got a big population. I under, I totally understand that. Mm. I get that. But with, with uh, such a big head start. Yeah. With this amazing vaccine that they can make and mass produce so well, mm. so much so that they can export it all around the world. True. Then what? Are, why are we looking at a 1% vaccination schedule here? Yeah. That's absolutely. ridiculous. Yeah. So again, China under the CCP doesn't change. Yeah. We can use this as an example, just teleport back. Let's time travel back to Chairman Mao's time mm. when everyone was starving to death and they still exported grain to the Soviet Union yeah. because they had to meet the quotas and make sure that China looks and saves space and looks face. power yeah. powerful in the world That's stage. It's terrible, terrible if you read the history about that, you know, because Mao killed all the sparrows. Yes. This stupid policies where he was like a sparrow thief of a thousand years you know they even have poems right. about how bad sparrows are right so basically incentivized everyone and i mean everyone to go out and kill sparrows because mm. he's his logic was that the sparrows were eating the grain right. okay so he went out and got everyone and they went mad the whole country went mad for a short minute and went out and killed like two billion sparrows or whatever it was and decimated the sparrow population by banging drums, making noise, trapping them, doing whatever. So they would prevent them from landing by constantly banging drums and making noises so that they would actually die mm. of exhaustion flying around. Sure. So they killed all the sparrows. And so there was nothing to eat the locusts. It sounds like a biblical tale, but it's actually just <laughs> the truth, okay? Yes. So the locusts came in and ate all the grain, okay? Whereas the sparrows ate a little bit, but at least they ate the locusts and stuff. Yeah. Decimated, decimated the crops. And how many millions of people starved to death as a result? But during this time, he's still like, oh, no, we, we, we're doing very well. Our communist system's working well. Let's uh, keep up our face and But the and thing is, Mao didn't grain. even know the scale of the starvation because what happens is the yes. people below him and the people below him, they can't answer. They don't want to, to take the blame. Sure. So what they do is they over-report. So yeah. all of these these communes and stuff would over-report their numbers just to, sure. so they don't lose funding and stuff. Yeah, right? they don't lose face. They don't lose you know, face. You don't want to lose face if you're underperforming because of the way the system works, it's your head on the block. Sure. And you will face punishment and like severe right. punishment. So right. not only is it about keeping face, but also, you know, what I avoiding want, punishment. What I want people to take away from that is that's how mainland China currently works. Nothing yeah. changed. No. It's just that there's not starvation anymore sure. as much, right? Yeah. So what we're looking at is a system that there's no accountability yet again. There's quotas, always quotas. That's why you see those days where those cops come in for one day out of like six months or whatever to, you know, clean up the streets when the government yeah, official, government official through, comes and everything goes back to chaos. Sure, it's sure. all bullshit. It and that's how China currently works. So it's smoke and mirrors. Yeah. It's quotas. Quotas are China's favorite thing in the entire world, sure. by the way. Yeah. And five year plans, five and year quotas. plans and quotas. Yeah. And that's what you have to understand when you look at uh, uh, pandemic numbers, when you look at GDP numbers, when you look at economic growth, you have to understand all of this is based on that broken quota system yeah. that Chairman Mao kind of came up with. Yeah. Nothing has changed. No. And it still works that way because it's the local provincial government. Yeah. They're underperforming. But they know that if they report a higher GDP, right. not only do they get more subsidies from the government, but they get praise, you know, sure. and they get bonuses and they get all this stuff. But if they underreport, they get penalized, or if they report the truth, I should say, they get penalized heavily. Yes. So what do they do? They just fake the numbers. And this has, of course, happened with the uh, COVID-19 spread as well. If your province suddenly has a breakout, and I say this every time we have one of these podcasts, but if your province has some breakout, a couple of cases, if you report that, that means you failed. Yeah. That means that your province hasn't been able to contain it, yeah. and you're going to be in a lot of trouble, and you're going to cause international shame to the whole country, and national shame. You also so, won't get kickbacks from the central no, government. No, absolutely. So what do you do is you just kind of 
change the numbers around, make excuses. These people didn't die of COVID. They, they died, died of something else, of something else TB yeah. or whatever, pneumonia. Um, and so that's why it's very difficult to get any kind of accurate numbers. But now this is a number that China would want everybody sure. to know. So this is something that they, if anything, are inflating. Yeah. And it's still only 1%, 1.13%, whereas the U.S., which they're continually ragging on, oh, so many people died in the U.S., 5.48%, um, which is good. Yeah, we're and working climbing, on it. Climbing. Working on it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, anyway, I thought you guys, I put down the, actually, I'll put this in the link thing. Uh, yeah. It's howmanyvaccinated.com. I think it's important to keep an eye on. Yeah. Um, maybe after this podcast, China will like send, they'll be like, say we're like 70% there. Yeah, yeah, quickly increase that number. Yeah. Divided by 50% efficacy, right? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's move on. Okay, time for a couple of super chats, guys, and then we're going to move on to our next part. You know, um, the next the next part, the world news thing, which we're going to be talking about, is a big topic. Yeah, it's, yeah. So it's actually here. almost as big as our uh, yeah. our main topic, so please stick, stick, stick around for a bit. Okay, so. It's an important one today, guys. Super uh, important. Ma no, more important than you know. Matyaz Gorsek, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Jeremiah Johnson, some cash for the Asahi Fund. Oh, oh I love crap. Asahi. Do you uh, know? Have you noticed that uh, it's just impossible to get good Asahi here? We we had this conversation I know. on the stream. Yeah, we did. It's just it's. Sorry, have to import this is, some. This is being very bad. Okay. Okay. Asahi Fund for when you boys get to Japan this year. Now that's that's what we're going to do. Excellent. Or Strong Zero, I guess. Blah. <laughs> <laughs> so what sort of bikes are you wanting to ride there? Which islands are you hoping to get to? We're going to do top to bottom. Yeah. Um, or bottom, bottom to top. Bottom or to actually top, do yeah. bottom to top. Mm. Um, we haven't decided on bikes, but it's got to be something either ridiculous or iconic. It yeah, can't something just, very It can't Japanese. just be something useful. Yeah. So mm -hmm. we'll, we'll, we'll work on it. Yeah. Uh, but we can rent an, any any kind of bike now. So yeah. not limited. Which is great. So sorry, JPN, uh, can't be as bad as a computer company called Wang back in the day. Yeah. Didn't turn heads in the 50s when it was founded, but by the 70s and 80s, awkward. Yeah, I know. Wang. I didn't yeah. even know about that. Did you know about it? No, I oh, don't. There was a couple of funny ones. What was that one in Shenzhen? It turned out to be a really big company, like a German company, but had a most terrible, terrible name. Oh, man. I gotta, I'll got. i try to remember it. If I remember, I'll tell you. Sure. Yeah. Uh, e. Clay Thompson says, I hope this is enough for you to buy a Chinese moon rock. Okay. Um, uh, Eleven says, "Hey Storzel, so are you gonna respond to the Lao Wai dude who made a video outing your business relations with the Yakuza and carjacking back in essay? We had to talk yeah. about it. Yeah, we did. Don't we worry did. about it. We just just all, all in f good fun. Minimus Max, I need to know why Winston never buttons up the top button. Oh, it's very simple. You know, since I got all my shirts and uh, jackets and stuff tailor made um, in China, and I, I've come to America, I've gained a lot of weight." And because I've gained a lot of weight, I can do up my top button, but it's suffocating. So changes your voice. Yeah, it's just it's not <laughs> comfortable. That's the reason. I and I'll tell you. you one thing: as soon as I lose the weight, the buttons will start, you know, buttoning it's back. Like up. motivation or something. Yeah. Uh, cool. Uh, John Ellis says, "Refugee or U visa after harassment?" I doubt it. No, nah, none of that stuff. Jordan T. Russo, are you guys following the CCP pressure on Australia? Oh, we certainly are. Yeah. We actually have some of that in the next segment. Yeah, well, I mean, I might as well yeah, pop over. Yeah, let's get into our next segment, everyone. It's worldview. We talk about everything in the world, but specifically, usually to do with China. Yeah. Okay. Now, something that um, makes me mad, and I'm pretty sure, uh, hopefully, it makes you just as mad, everybody out there, <clears throat> is the communist Chinese military companies listed under EO one three nine five have more than one thousand one hundred subsidies. Now. What this means, everybody, is, let's see, what is the, I, I have to bring it up. I wrote this down, so bear with me for a second here. Um, what do you need to look up? To, I have to look up what I said, yes. Um, oh, you had that thing. I actually wrote something tweet. about it. Give me one second. And where on earth is that now? Uh, bear with me, guys. Bear with me. Okay. <clears throat> U.S. investors. Okay. The United States investors. So this is a list. Now listen carefully, guys, because this might actually include you. U.S. investors, banks, pension funds, foundations, insurance companies, and university endowments have for years unknowingly funded at least 44 Chinese military companies as a result of their opaque network of at least 1,100 plus subsidies, uh, subsidiaries. And there's a, there's a fact sheet from the State Department of the United States of America. Yeah, you can actually scroll forward the next slide I put the top. 
Okay. Uh, the, just the ones that were on the top. Okay. Um, so basically, the, I like actually I like the U.S. state government website these days. They've been putting out a lot of the stuff related to China. Mm -hmm. And this one is a damning piece. Um, a lot of these companies that you might recognize, I recommend going to the website. Um, by the way, the, the, this was pulled, or this was archived from the site. I had to go back to archive.org mm -hmm. to get this. But there's a whole list of companies that have been complicit in funding, unknowingly, yeah. Complicit in funding the actual, literally the the mil, the enemy's military. Yeah, I say, and I say military. the I say the enemy in that like, right now I think we can both look at China and, and American governments as being in opposition. Sure. And so their money is being funneled in a lot of aerospace companies being funneled into these companies for Beijing to fund the army yeah. in China. Correct. Which is very worrying. Well, I mean, it's something that I've been saying for a very long time. The Chinese government is incredibly clever and very good at taking, advan taking advantage of the West through oh. lobbyists and whatever else, you know, all these different programs that are set up for universities to exchange ideas and stuff. I mean, look at the Confucius Institute, okay? Mm. It has spread its tentacles throughout the free world. It's in almost every university. And yet there's nothing that's equivalent in China from any other country. No. All right. And it's set up as kind of like a cultural exchange. We but, joked about that. We're like, can we yeah. set up the American yeah, cult the, in South what, African George, culture? George Washington Some, Institute yeah. or something. A, would a never, freedom yeah, and Yeah, where, where you, tell, you tell people like all the propaganda points of America, yeah. you know, and you like force it down on everyone's right. throat. Yeah. Oh, you can get a free English lesson from us, but you must realize that every single war and everything that we participated in was the it's other justified. person's fault. It's 100% justified. We're in the right. You should support right. it. You know, that kind of nonsense. Because right. that's what the Confucius Institute yeah. is. Okay, it's basically just a soft power propaganda arm. The thing is, it's supposed to be an exchange thing, but it's always one way. They get the, the Chinese infiltration infiltration happens one way they don't allow professors to kind of go over there yeah. and go and study in the big research institutes in china in sensitive areas and like sure. studying military tech and have access to like you know everything right. you know that we don't have thousands upon thousands of students from america going into china no. you know the same way that it works the other way around and getting right. all these like uh grants and things like that it's a one-way street so it's incredibly frustrating, but very predictable to see that they've been taking advantage of multiple institutions, investors, yeah, yeah. pension funds. Imagine your pension fund is paying for that missile that's going to come flying into a jet from your country or, you know, the biological weapons that are being prepared to be unleashed on an unsuspecting populace somewhere or training the PLA army that's going to storm into South Korea or whatever. You know, I'm just making these stupid scenarios. None of them are true. Just making them up just to point out the fact that Potentially your pension fund, your bank, your university endowments are funding the military of China. Mm. It's dumb. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's something that's outrageous. And this is something we need to start calling out. Now, along those lines, I've got something else to add here. So it's about a bit of a roll with this stuff. Keep rolling. <clears throat> okay. The UK uh, sends, wait for it. Okay. 71 million pounds a year in foreign aid to China. Okay? Why? <laughs> this is a good question. And um, here's my question for you. Why is a country with a space program who's landing on the moon and doing all this other bullshit, why are they receiving millions upon millions of pounds and dollars every year in foreign aid? It's my question. I can't answer that question. That's ridiculous. How is it that mis this powerful, rich country that claims that it can beat the COVID, that it didn't come from them, that can do everything and lifted everyone out of poverty? Obviously, you didn't lift everyone out, out of poverty if everyone's, all the other countries in the world are giving you money because you're poor. doesn't make sense, right? No. You have a space program. You've been to the moon. You've got plans on sending stuff to Mars. You think you're number one. You're amazing. You're so great. Why are you getting so much money in foreign aid? Surely, if you're going to get up there and brag about being the top of the pops and so amazing, you don't deserve that aid anymore. No. From my point of view, China should be giving aid out at this point if they claim to be so powerful and amazing and rich and mm -hmm. capable. Why our country is especially... It's the least charitable country in the world. It is the least charitable country. And that's, that's fact. You can look it yeah. up. But why is it? that we're still sending aid. Why is it that countries like the UK and the US, and I know the US cut it off, what, a year or two ago, a couple, like, you know, I think Trump was the one who's like, enough of this crap. Mm. 
But why is it that Canada, the UK, Australia, all these other like, you know, well-meaning countries send so much money to China mm. when China is constantly attacking, at least verbally attacking these countries and putting them down and treating them like dirt with their wolf warrior bullshit, their wolf wanker turd warrior shit. Why are these countries being like, oh, poor China, let's give them some foreign aid. They really need our help. They don't. Okay. You're basically giving money to them, which they're taking and putting directly into their military to attack you. You know what I mean? I don't get it. Stop. Just stop. <laughs> I think it's old, long, like long withstanding contracts and stuff, but it doesn't matter. No, stop. I, I totally agree. I think. China doesn't honor its contracts. Look what they did to Hong Kong. Yeah, true. Okay. That was a, that was a contract. Yeah. Leave it alone for 50 years. They couldn't even do that. Nope. Something simple like that. They couldn't do that. So if they continually break their contracts, why should the rest of the world keep their contracts with China? I agree. I you think know? It's, it's probably conducive for the world to move on to, to not honor them at this point. Yeah, you know, the UK, that's 71 million pounds, could surely go to the people of the UK who right now have lost their jobs or are stuck in this stupid lockdown from the pandemic. Maybe to... Oh, it's okay. China, it's okay. Because China yeah. gi gives eight... Wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Wait, no. no, no, no. I mean, seriously, that, that money that you're sending to China, which caused this pandemic in the first place, surely that money could be used wisely, you know, to help the people of the UK. Just a thought. Just you know? a thought. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Just had to get that off my uh, chest. <laughs> I, it makes me furious. <laughs> yeah. I just, I'm actually trying to keep my cool over yeah. here. Yeah. Uh, cool. So let's uh, have a couple of... No, or, cool. Oh, we have Finish to continue. Up, yeah. Sorry. Let's continue Fine, this same here. Mm-hmm. Right, so you want to read out a couple of these? No, things? no, no. Okay. Just scroll forward. All right. We'll put a pin on that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this is the UN Watch, which is not the UN. It's just no. a, a Twitter account that watches what the UN is doing. Yes. Now, China being part of the UN, which is one of the greatest historical mistakes of modern history. Absolutely. Is, uh, is on the offense, just like it did to the US back, I think it was in March. Um, mm -hmm. They always, China or America will put out the, uh, what's it called? human rights abuses that China does, and right. rightfully so, let's be sure. honest. Yeah. China richly likes to come back and say, no, no, uh Sure. America's got human rights abuses and mm. finds just, you know, outlandish things to pinpoint. Mm. This is quite rare. I don't usually see China go after Australia, but China being the little, the little baby government, bully government that it is, likes to pick an enemy that's misbehaving, mm -hmm. call them the gum on the bottom of, of its shoe. That's what they call Australia, yeah. And they're just going after Australia. They're trying their best. They're sanctioning. They're putting these trade war things. You know, these. they've really tried to destroy Australia's um, economy. And it's all punishment for the fact that China called for an open inquest into where the coronavirus came from. Yeah. Australia asked for an independent group of people to go to China to investigate. And because they had the gall to do that, China's like, well, screw you. We're not going to buy your coal anymore. We're going to put a however many hundred percent increase on your wine. Australia sucks. They start to insult Australia. They start all this wolf warrior tactic bullshit. And you notice when there's ever a, a point of guilt yes. in the Chinese government, they have to go on the offense with the wolf wanker stuff. Absolutely. They go ape. Yeah. They go ape. And that's why they did this. They're mm. like, can we go see where the coronavirus came from? <laughs> like, yeah, let's exactly. destroy you. Yeah. So what does it say? Well... China today reviewed Australia's rights record at the UN. Number one, combat racism and protect minorities. Number two, close migrant detention centers. Number three, investigate Australian war crimes. Number four, eliminate systematic discrimination. Number five, stop making baseless charges for political purposes. <laughs> I actually, if you would reverse the emojis, right? Yeah, yeah. And you change the photo down there. Yeah. I actually would think this is supposed to be the other way around. I mean, I it's think, pinpoint perfect. Yeah, I think China, especially number five, stop making baseless charges for political purposes. That that just completely defines what China has been in the modern in the modern age. Sure. Look at what happened to the two Michaels. Yeah. One of our, one of them is our friend, as you guys know, if you watch the show. But just think about all the bullshit arrests and disappearances that have happened to human rights lawyers and whoever. Just. Stupid, baseless charges for political reasons. You know, you say something bad about the Chinese government and you get in trouble. And that's basically I'm just that. saying you could replace each one of these. Combat racism and protect minorities. That China All the minorities in China yeah. that have autonomous regions. If you ever look at a map of China, it says autonomous region. Like it looks like some sort of minority autonomous region. Mm -hmm. That means it's much less free than the <laughs> yeah. other provinces. Yes. It means it's not autonomous. No. Means it's completely cracked down on. Those are the places the where, when we try to stay there yeah. as foreigners driving through on our bikes, yes. they don't let us. No, and we're not because they're hiding stuff. Yeah. 
Uh, and you could also say uh, for migrant detention centers, how about close the Xinjiang concentration, concentration camps? camps yeah. What about investigate Australian war crimes? How about we say uh, police brutality in Hong Kong and shutting down all of their uh, democracy, human rights, and all that kind of stuff, freedom sure. of speech. Uh, also stuff within Chinese borders as well, let's be honest. Uh, eliminate system systematic did that mean systemic? Yeah, whatever. Systematic discrimination. Mm. Mm, how about mm. not letting black people into to, restaurants or hotels just yeah, because they're black? them into the streets and yeah. sending them home. How about not harassing people from Africa? I am from Africa, my passport says so. So while I was in China, I was harassed a lot. Yeah. And very often when they would actually see me in person, because, mm. you know, they get a directive from whoever their police area and they're like anyone who's african right now go like basically raid them to mm. check that all their papers are in order it would happen to me all the time and they'd arrive at my house in the middle of the night just because i'm african yeah. discrimination is a massive thing in china and you know because you being american didn't get harassed at no, all it's except, different very yeah. different now yeah america's yeah, the sure. enemy of the of the year yeah i'm just saying like every year i would sure. get multiple times that yeah. they'd harass me sure um, discrimination is huge in China, even against other Chinese from different provinces. It's huge. Discrimination more or less defines a big portion of Chinese oh, society. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, you just have to understand that that that's something... class-based discrimination is the biggest. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the it's biggest. poor people don't hang out with wealthy people. No, in China. the other way around. Yeah, it's, it's awful. Anyway, hmm. um, just go to the next part. I just yeah. wanted to, to throw this in here. Just uh, trying to, for your human rights, just to give you a little wake-up call, Chinese government, I'm going to splash you with some cold water because I know you mm -hmm. like that. Uh, it's good for your healthy. Yeah. Um, if we look at this, this is your human rights ranking. Mm. Uh, I believe this is this year. I'll get us out of here so people sure. can read it. Um, so before you go and start attacking other human rights uh, violations of other countries, let's have a look here. Uh, Australia is number five in the world. Yeah. Interesting. We have the U.S. at 17. Uh, where's where's China here? Oh, China's uh, 129. So maybe start looking at yourself real quick. <laughs> yeah. You know, this is not some like government funded organization, by the way. This is, you know, researchers around the world. Yeah. Putting this together. I mean, you based know, on real violations. Yeah. It's so look in the mirror mm -hmm. real quick. The mirror, even the mirror. Yes. And uh, and mirror you might cat? see something you don't like. And yeah. then you might be able to sort it out. What do you think? Agreed. Agreed. So yeah. basically, um, if you look at this, the, the numbers on this chart, Australia has uh, 9.12. I don't even know. What, what is that? That's out of 10. Okay, 9.12 out of 10. And China has a 5.9. Yeah, well, we're just looking at rankings, really. Yeah, it's a different ranking. And China is China's also going down. If you see, it's down two places this year. Sure, sure. And continually goes down. So just a little bit of truth. Um, might want to improve. Again, own... truth is the biggest enemy of the CCP. Yeah. It's unfortunate yeah. because... You know, this is, I'm sure you, you've come across people like this in your life where they say a lot, like pathological liars, for yeah, instance. Yeah, yeah. And they say they've done these amazing things. I knew a guy who told me he snowboarded down Mount Everest or whatever, and he fully, <laughs> I'm not even joking. <laughs> and he, he made this elaborate story about how this happened. And he was so convinced that he'd done it. And he tried his best to convince everyone else. And, you know, if you let them get away with it long enough and everyone was just humoring him all the time, it's like, yeah, that must have been really cool. It's like, like empowering. It's so amazing you managed to do that, that type of thing. Right. The, the guy starts to believe it's real. Sure. But then... If you actually put him on a snowboard and you're like, okay, dude, you said you snowboarded down Mount Everest. How about you snowboard down this little hill? And he just fails and he falls over and he can't even balance on the snowboard. That's when you get to see the real truth of yeah, the matter. Yeah, good analogy. And, and China is such a pathological liar. I mean, the CCP. Yeah. They will say whatever amazing things that they've done or they're so good at doing this or they've got all this stuff under control, or this or that, the next thing. And no one calls them out because... They don't have freedom of press, so the press can't call them out. Citizens can't call them out. If you call them out, you disappear. Look at all the people that were trying to report on the Wuhan situation that got disappeared, either never showed up again or showed up apologizing for being so arrogant and, you know, um, causing disharmony or they whatever. They also hush money. Yeah, of course, hush money. Nobody calls them out, okay? And look at us. Small YouTubers who call them out get attacked ferociously by the government. Mm. You know, by a foreign government attacking YouTubers. It's ridiculous, yeah. right? And there are hordes of 50 cent army that come on after us and go after our families and our wives. And we're talking Chinese about people families. actually in the government here, yeah. guys. This yeah. is not speculation here. We've, we know. No, absolutely. <laughs> what, what kind of a, an insecure, petty, useless government are we talking about here? They are just pathological liars. Mm. And the truth, when it's actually shown, and the only way to show it is when the Chinese government 
tries to do something in broad daylight that they've said that they have already done or can do and they fail, yeah. like look at the vaccine, etc. Right. That's when the rest of the world can finally say, hang on a second, all the stuff Please, that China's been world. saying is crap. We can't just keep trusting them all this time. And it's very... We can't take them seriously. No, and it's very obvious why they need to wine and dine and pay and fund white YouTubers yeah. in China to go and repeat CCP rhetoric. It, I mean, it might look ridiculous to you and you might yeah. see right through it, but a government this insecure and this much of a pathological liar needs white monkeys to do their bidding. Yeah. And unfortunately, that's just how it works. Yeah. It's just how it works. And those, unfortunately, those uh, Westerners that are doing the bidding of the CCP, please go watch my video, by the way. Yeah. Like I said, it's an hour long, but it's a good insight. Sure. Although they might think it's harmless, they don't realize what damage they're doing to actual Chinese people mm. because they are being taken. Their video is saying, oh, the CCP is controlled this great. The CCP is great. Yeah. America sucks. They take that and then they repost it on state media in right. China. And so your average, lowly, everyday, kind of lower class Chinese guy who's sitting there, doesn't have a clue about the world, sees it on TV and he's like, wow, the Foreigners are saying it. That means we're doing a great job. That so means actual right. change can't be made. People with real yeah. grievances and human rights abuses in China, yeah. the Chinese people, they get more, even more undermined than they already yes, were. Yes, absolutely. It's 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 atrocious. Yeah. To promote the CCP's ideology and soft power in mm -hmm. China and get paid for it or be funded or get some kick kickback for it, as if Western citizen, rightfully knowing what's actually going yeah. on, mm -hmm. is truly evil. Absolutely. It's truly evil. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, Actually, we don't have time for it. I'll read it next time. But I do have an open challenge for those guys. Right. And we might, we'll bring it up next time. What do you think? I, think I have so. a very open, amazing challenge for those guys that they can literally flip us on our head mm -hmm. and prove everything that we say is wrong if they do it. Sure. They do. Open challenge next time. Something that we could easily do, <clears throat> by the way. Something yeah. that we can easily do. Yeah, we can do. Sure. Uh, anyway. Guys, yeah, we up. have so many topics that we'd love to cover on this podcast, which we can't this time around. But that's why we've also moved this to a weekly podcast. Yes. Don't worry, next week... We're going to get back stuck into the thick of things. Right now, we're Don't going worry. to answer yeah. your questions. And you're going to question Sorry. our answers. All right, so let's get stuck in, shall we? Yes. Danis D'Souza, there's a proof proportion of 50% total immunity, 78 mild infection prevention, and 100, per, 100 for grave infection. Sorry, guys, they cannot support you in that. It cannot support us in what? I think he's saying that it's um, it's a, it's a better than what, it, what we said it is. That's what he's trying to say. Oh, for that. For we, the, the, yeah, we're talking about total results here yes, that, was, that were put out. And it was actually by Beijing, a Beijing think tank that put that out. Mm. So that's, if you're talking about the total numbers, quantifiable numbers compared to other vaccine results, yeah. it's yeah. much lower. Yeah. Um, Dason Strapason, we're both using the Chinese vaccine, the Chinese aren't. Or we're using us oh, at whatever yeah. country he's in. That's I mean, ironic. That, that's one of those things is you're going to find that the top elites and the rich people in China will get the Pfizer vaccine or, you know, another foreign vaccine. They won't get the Sinovac vaccine. Mm. And you know how I know this? It's because I've already had that confirmed by some very rich people that I know. Remember, both Seamilk and myself know a lot of Chinese people. Okay? I would hope so. <laughs> It's what happens when you live in a country for 14, 15 years. Yeah. That's what happens when, like I did, not only do you teach a lot of kids when you first get there and get to know their rich parents, but then you go and teach working adults mm -hmm. and get to know people that are in the middle class, you know, and the up and coming. And then you teach managers and you go and you train doctors like I eventually did. And, you know, other high, higher up, you know, bigger income people. You meet people a lot of rich. Government. Yeah, <laughs> lots of government people. You meet a lot of rich people. And it's the rich people, which, you know, in China, if you're rich, you're just absurdly rich. That's usually how it works compared to the average person anyway. Yeah. And it's those people that trust Chinese products the least. Mm -hmm. And those are the people that are getting the foreign vaccines and stuff like that. So why would you go for something that Chinese people that are actually have reached a, a higher point in life would not go for? You know right. what I mean? Right. Does it make sense? Yes. If if the Chinese elite do not trust those products, why should the rest of the world? Yeah. You know? Um, Searing Song, do you agree most of America is caught up in domestic identity politics with the two parties? In the meanwhile, we're losing uh, in foreign policy and selling out to the CCP. I would absolutely sure. agree with that 100%. I mean, especially uh, as an outsider myself, I see American politics as a 
it's a clown show. It's the most ridiculous, like watching a, a circus. Mm. And it's this, just imagine you've got this circus and everyone's paying attention to this ridiculous performance. But meanwhile, outside, I don't know, you've got wild animals and, you know, fires and all sorts of terrible things happening. No one's noticing that the tent's about to burn down and be like beset upon by a million hyenas and lions and jackals and whatever else because they're too busy focusing on the stupid clown act that's going on inside the circus. That's the way I see it as an outsider. And American politics is a huge part of people's lives here. I've noticed it's like actually quite absurd how much politics is a part of people's lives here because everywhere else I've been, it's not that much of a big deal, but Americans love their politics. But it's so much so that it creates such a hyper focus, focus mm. on like, oh, this politician said that. This oh, politician this is the worst country yeah, in the world. This, this politician had this kind of food or, you know, mm. went to this party and didn't wear a mask or whatever. You know, you're looking at this stuff and you're like, you, you bunch of morons, do you realize that there's a bigger picture here? Mm. That this entire society in America is currently very fragile and mm. it's kind of under attack at the moment mm. by big powers like China, for instance. And because you're focusing on these stupid little details and what pronouns you should be calling each other and things like that, the rest of the world that has nefarious purposes against your society are g gaining an incredibly big foothold. And you're not noticing it because you're paying attention to garbage. So hopefully, this is my hope, because somebody who loves America and the Western world, I hope you guys wake up to the fact that by being divisive like this and not working together, you are allowing the enemy to slip into your ranks. You know. I absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. Um, I think people need to understand that the unity is very important right now. National yeah. security, I think people need to take much more seriously yeah. right now, especially yeah. with what's happening with China. Mm. And hopefully people can get on the same page. Because the thing that really, really gets me mad is that when people keep making these comparisons to China, yeah. oh, we're already worse. The Democrats are worse than China. Oh, the Republicans are worse than China. Yeah. Scum this, you know, all, this kind of, all these comparisons. And you have no idea no. what you're saying. You have no idea what liberties you're afforded. Yeah. Compared to the average citizen in China, you don't understand. Yeah. Right? yeah, the comparison is useless, and don't make that comparison. It's, yeah, it's um, everyone ridiculous. I, I understand when you're spoiled and when you live in a society like America, you get accustomed to having to complain about your situation. Woe is me, you know. I'm in the lower income bracket. Woe is me, life's unfair, all this stuff. And it's, it's not that your situation is not valid. And I'm not trying to downplay your struggles and all the kind of crap you go through your life. You have to understand everybody goes through crap. But you're still in a better position by right. far than anyone that's in a low income bracket in China or South Africa or any of these developing countries where life is actually tough, where it's really tough. Those the people in those situations, they don't care about all this petty stuff here and there. They know what real hardship is and real hardship is not this perceived victimhood. Real hardship is when nobody cares if you complain about being a victim because they don't give a shit. And survival is the only important thing. And if you complain about being a victim, they will make you a bigger victim. And you will really have something to complain about because you'll be dead. You know what I mean? Mm. So I'm just saying, get over yourselves, focus, work together. We're dealing with a, a kind of a, a tipping point here in the history of the world where the idea of free, open democracies around the world and in the West is seriously being threatened by countries like China who wish to impose their authoritarian kind of system onto everyone else. Mm -hmm. And it's going to happen if you don't watch out. Next minute, you're going to be living in a 1984 Orwell novel. And I'm not even joking. This is not some nonsense. It's actually going to happen if you're not careful. So please pay more attention. Good point. Uh, Ergen Schelling, this is the Wu Mao. He right. says, "I'm not a shill." Mm -hmm. uh, thank you for the money, by the way. He says, yeah. "I'm, I'm the, chi I'm, I am tried the vaccine, Chinese vaccine, and it works." You guys are mad that China will be number one GDP, and this is well, our, the example of our freedom of speech in our comments section. Well, he's paying with Canadian dollars. That's what I'm saying. You're free to give us money. That's great. Five Canadian dollars, and it makes sense because there are more Chinese people in Canada than native Can Canadians these days, almost. So, mm -hmm. I don't, so if you're working yeah. for the CCP, that's yeah, it's yeah. the place Thanks to go. Thanks for sharing the wealth. Yeah, uh, D Denise de Sousa. I mm -hmm. live in Brazil. We're trying all kinds of vaccines. The only one with zero transparency is the Russian. The Chinese looks bad, but it's a start. Thanks for the, the insight. That's cool. Absolutely. Yeah, I, I heard the Russian one has zero 
Zero data. Okay. That's far. Uh, Manji Steb. Hi, Serpents at ANC Milk. I'm a British Indian and a big fan, big, big fan of you guys. Quick question. Have you heard about the recent border clash between China yeah. and India in your circle? Yes. Mm. Uh, do people in China know about how the PLA got whacked? Absolutely not. No, no. In fact, in, 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 in China, if anything's ever reported, it's how bad India is and mm. how successful the PLA is at standing their ground and, you know... And de- like making the situation calm down. Yeah, you, you have to understand that it doesn't matter. You, you'll get the same thing from India as you get from China and from any country, really, is they want to win and they mm. want to say they won. Mm. Okay, so you're going to find bullshit on both sides. But um, China has a history of suppressing news. Mm-hmm. And so they make sure that any bad news doesn't get told mm-hmm. in China. You know, it's right. censored. The outside world is censored from China. Sure. It's very cut off. Right. Mm. Um, Frosty Flake says, got second Pfizer vaccine shot today. No problems. That's awesome. Good for you, man. Uh, Jeremiah Berry, thanks for always speaking truth. Thank you. It's an absolute pleasure, mate. Um, you know, totally open cards here. We can't always be right. Of course, we're going to make mistakes in what we say from time to time. But it's better to at least say what we believe to be true. Mm-hmm from our own experiences and stuff than to be quiet about it, you know? Sure. Hopefully we can always help someone out and give them a little bit of insight into what's going on with their dealings with China or or just in general, really. Mm-hmm. Mm. I realize I'm like really far off off the frame. Okay. Um, spiffy wrecked because you're like crowding me out. I'm and not crowding you at all. You have like a foot next to you. No, I don't, that's a person. <laughs> uh, spiffy Rack, to be fair, if the crap vaccine just means that uh, cases would be, f- uh, that would be fatal or mild, it's still better than nothing. I hate Winnie the Pooh, by the way. I, yeah, I did not argue against, again, I'm not arguing against don't do it at all. I'm just sure. saying China's rush to make it the forefront number one best vaccine of all time while all the other vaccines are bad is very immoral and, and awful. That's yeah. something to be reconsidered, right? Because right. a lot of these countries with diplomatic relations or trade agreements with China are going to prefer the Chinese vaccine just to make their relationship with China stronger. Yeah. That's what I'm warning against. Right. It's it, it's a worse vaccine, and your country is going down a dark path sure. if they're dealing with China. Sure. Absolutely. Dennis Stafford, thank you. Alt Stuff TV, thank you. Um, I am a Tibetan. This is uh, the, sh- uh, the, the, the show. It's fun to have. We have an actual Wuma out here. Yeah. In the, sure. Here. I, I am a Tibetan Canadian, and all my family members in Tibet use Sinovac, and they told me it worked. Wow, that's cool. I'm glad that China, out of their 1% of all their vaccination schedule, they went to rural Tibet to vaccinate your family. That's fantastic. That's yeah, it shows, really you, shows you how altruistic they are that's towards really Tibetans, nice. yes. This is, by the way, guys, this is either, it's either a troll or an actual Wuma, but this is pretty spot on, like lazy Wuma on this. Yeah. This is textbook. free Tibet, by the way. Yeah, free Tibet. Can we say that? Dalai Lama. Oh, yeah, because he's Tibetan. Let's get him on right? the, sh- let's get him on the let's show. Let's get Dalai Lama on the show. And mm. actually, Ergen Schelling, if you're actual Tibetan that loves the CCP, which uh, is very rare, we'd love to have you on the show yeah, too. It'd come, be fantastic. Come on the show. Brian, uh, thoughts on China's population size? Reading some reports that fertility rate is about one, even less than one in Northeast, looking bleak despite size now. That's true. It's one of the lowest in the world. And they're going to have a massive problem. It's all because of the population reduction strategies, with the uh, one child, now two child policy. They can't replicate their population. It's going to be a huge issue later on down the road. I, I have to talk a bit, little bit about uh, something here because sure. I was incredibly shocked. You know, my wife actually had some issues with her ovaries and, mm-hmm. and things like that, you know. And so this is before we left China and she went in for surgery because she had, you know, cysts and other mm. Many fibroids. Chinese women deal with this, yeah, by the way. fibroids and stuff. And it was scary. I actually think I may have made a video. Maybe I posted I it on Patreon. I maybe I, I can't remember. But uh, it was an incredibly scary situation for me because, you know, it's my wife, obviously. This is before we had a kid. We were pretty sure that she wouldn't be able to have a kid after the surgery, but we were lucky, you know, and we have a miracle baby. But the fact of the matter is she had to go in for surgery and it was um, a, a a very stressful situation for me because you know it's anyway the, the fact of the matter she went in for the surgery um i remember it being quite gross because halfway through the like literally halfway through the surgery a nurse walks out this is a crowded room of people oh, waiting around okay happened, yeah. crowded there's a door that they don't let you walk in past okay because that's where they take the sure. patients into surgery but then they've got this like hallway area where there's tons of people sitting there halfway through the, her surgery by the way and it's like a it's, it's like a, an assembly line at a factory. It's like one person comes in, no one goes out. You know, that kind of thing. Halfway through, this nurse walks out with this like empty Ziploc bag full of this d- disgusting ah, fibroids yeah, 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 and cysts yeah. and stuff and comes up and says, oh, look, this is what we just took out. And then just like walks off. I'm like, ew. <laughs> you know, but not only that, it's in front of like about, I don't know, 50, 60 other people sitting there. 
Um, wow. Yeah, exactly. I hate that story. <laughs> I've seen so many bags of I took gross photos. shit. Oh. I took photos. I'll show oh, you. Oh, yeah, no, you did. I did. <laughs> you did. Oh, anyway. I remember I was in your apartment. You showed yeah, me that. I showed you the photo. Oh. Anyway, the fact of the matter is, um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was pretty terrible. Uh, she recovered. We had a kid. Everything's fine. But the whole point of this is when we were in, because obviously after surgery, she has to recover. And a couple of, like a day or two before the surgery, she had to be in there anyway. They put them on a diet or whatever. While I was in the ward, now in China, when you go to the hospitals, it's not like in the West. And we had the kid and I had my sur- like uh, appendix, appendix out here. And it's awesome. You get your own room. You got a TV. Yeah, it's it's you're, you're weighted on China's hand and so foot. Bad. In China, they shove multiple people into the same, Screaming people into the same room. Yeah. Okay, But not only that, th- there's this weird situation in China where it's not like the hospitals here where the nurses look after you and bring, yeah, you, yeah, yeah. bring you food. Yeah. You have to rent basically yeah. an IE, which yeah. is like a, a nanny for yourself. Right. So you rent like this dirty nanny. Okay, and I'm, not, I'm being, no, no, I'm being no. honest here, dirty nanny because yeah, they, they're foul. Not, like, yeah. the, we're not this, being classist here. The, the couple of times I've seen this is they this like old middle-aged woman middle to the old woman will come in there and she basically like feeds you your soup changes your bed clothes for you does all this stuff it's not connected to the hospital mm. it's like a private person that yeah. you you hire but at least this nanny was like filthy looked like she hadn't washed her hair in like a month you know yeah and wearing they get countryside the, people the, that need to make the exact money. same clothes every day mm-hmm. for like however many days she came in there so you get this kind of filthy ie coming in there to look after the patients and then you've got like about five, six, seven people in one ward. They do have curtains that you can mm-hmm. like pull o- pull across to like get a bit of privacy. But you've got all these like, this is supposed to be a hospital ward. You're recovering from surgery and you've got like filthy IEs for everybody coming in and out all the time, bringing in their like dirt. From the countryside. Which yeah. So they do these long stints for like a, two weeks to a month at a time. Yeah, but I'm just saying like, you know, a hospital is supposed to be a sterile environment. I agree. Now they're no allowed. Soap, though. Yeah, they're allowed in and out all the time. Mm. Doesn't matter visiting hours or whatever. They come in and out, the dirty eyes. Now, uh, let me get to my point here. Okay? Yeah, you're really going Sorry. Around. I have to share these experiences because sure. not many people no, have good, these, it's right? Good. <clears throat> so while I was in this ward, what shocked me the most were the amount of young women who are in for very similar things. Mm. Problems with their uterus, mm. kind lot. of cancer stuff. Reproductive issues. Yeah, reproductive issues. But I'm talking about women in their 20s. Healthy young women. All the beds around. It's not like you would expect like someone going through menopause or somebody, sure. something of, of that nature to be in there to get surgery on their, their uh, ovaries and uterus and stuff. No, I'm talking about young, healthy-looking women all in there, like hunched over, trying to walk with the, like a, you know, the... The whatever you call that thing with the drip, you know, that thing. Yeah, the IV stand. Like kind of struggling to walk or can't walk or get in their IE to come in and change their bedpan and stuff. And I was like, these women are all very young and they're all suffering from these like reproductive issues. There must be something wrong. And it's got to be the diet or the pollution or there's something going on that's really affecting these young women because they were all young in that ward. And my mm-hmm. wife at the time was in her 30s, but she's, you know, not not late 30s or anything, you know, 32, 33, something like mm-hmm. that, you know. Yeah. Um and I was just it just was a shocker to me. So yes, the idea of there being a fertility problem, yeah. I mean, maybe it also comes from the fact that there are tons of abortions and things because of the one child policy and just the cavalier attitude towards reproduction and stuff in China might contribute, but either way it's a problem. It is big yeah. time. Well, I mean, cancer is a massive issue in general. Yeah, diabetes too. Yeah. But yeah. Uh, Archam, we got to hurry up, dude. Yeah, okay. Uh, Archam Kozlow, PPE money. Stay awesome, guys. Uh, Thank you. We'll come to Germany one day, and we certainly will. Thank Super you so much. Super appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, JJ, uh, he talks about the immunization thing. Thank you very much. Mm. Uh, Dason Strapson, as a Brazilian, I'm ashamed of my government. Cool. I mean, there's a lot to be ashamed of in many countries, to be honest. Yeah. And every government is. Remember, a government does not represent the people. No. no. And I would never hold it against you being Brazilian. Just as, you know. No. Who would? I, I don't hold a Chinese person. Of course. You know, no, again, I don't hold it against them, the CCP crap that the CCP does. I don't hold that against Chinese people. That would be very people. immoral to do that. I will hold it against a Chinese person who's a like a rabid nationalist who. Defending just, it. Goes maliciously, to, yeah, while maliciously, knowing the truth. Yeah, maliciously defends them. And I would do the same for anyone. It's like yeah. if I met a South African who rabidly defend, defends apartheid or some of the bad sure. policies of the government in the past, I would also be um, very critical of that person. For sure. You know? For sure. Um, <laughs> uh, Matthew Stein, thanks. 
Kane Ra, uh, did you see CGTN bragging about letting a foreigner examine moon samples? That's what they're talking about. We right. didn't see that. No, no. We'll, we'll have to look. look into it. Maybe we'll put it in the next episode. I wonder if they used one of our favorite white monkeys. I, I have to. Uh, here, Kane Ra, I'm actually going to put that in the notes so we, that we know. Yeah, for our next podcast, we'll bring it up. Thank you for uh, letting us know. Because that sounds kind of funny. Yeah. CGTN's lol. Always makes us lol. Uh, we got a lot to say about CGTN, actually. We do, actually. Uh, so, sorry, JPN, have you heard of Lucasfilm making their diversity-rich Star Wars comic, The High Republic, release a special China-only edition which strips out the diversity? <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised, but I would be surprised a little bit because Star Wars is so unpopular in China, it's not even funny. Yeah. Nobody... Pe- I I'm trying not to use absolutes. People in China do not like star wars that much it's very unpopular yeah it's not like transformers, transformers yeah. Yeah. yeah um china owes sean wyland the china owes the china china owes usa 1.6 trillion in unpaid debt mm-hmm. not to mention the reparations for leaking the cerveza sickness usa should default on the treasuries held by the ccp i think everyone would agree that yeah that's a, i agree with player. that 100 percent agree with that john blair uh hey guys very generous thank you john wow yeah I live in Canada, and after years of being disappointed in our government, I've been wanting to move to Taiwan. I was wondering how accepting the everyday Taiwanese folks are to foreigners. Very accepting. Very accepting. Uh, is citizens, citizens, yes, yes, five years. Yeah, and um, this is the thing that shocked me, is even though I've been married, I'd been married in China for, I don't know, however many years, uh, of course I wasn't allowed to work. You're not allowed to work if you're married in China. If you want to work, you have to get a separate work visa, which has nothing to do with your marriage. So if you're married or not, it doesn't have any bearing on anything. But... A friend of mine who was actually my housemate, he went to Taiwan and uh, he actually, uh, he, he was first in Taiwan and he taught there for about a year and then he had a visa issue. So he went, went to mainland China where he stayed with me as a housemate of mine for about a year. And then he went back to Taiwan and he married his Taiwanese girlfriend. Um, and the next day he was allowed to work. Mm-hmm. He, he got married to her. Like I went to his wedding and stuff. And legally, the next day he was allowed to work. Had all the, the rights. Got his ARC. He has all the rights of every citizen in Taiwan, basically. You know? Except to vote. Yeah, except to vote. So, yes, Taiwan is incredibly accepting. I got my ARC within a week of getting there. And within a week of me landing there, I could go get free health care. I free thought that was care. insane. Yeah, you can yeah. buy vehicles. Yeah. You can I, yeah, invest. You can buy a house. You can do everything. Account, all this stuff. Yeah. So, and these are the things a lot of people take for granted. You cannot do that kind of thing in no, China. No. It's not the same. They always treat a foreigner as an outsider. Yeah. You don't get an equivalent of a, an ARC in China. It doesn't no. work that way. NFT2, been watching for a while. Really appreciate you guys. Please add this to the Silver Bullet Fund so you can get something better instead. Thank you. Oh, and nice. I will. Celeste McConnell, did you see China is, says it's a victim after Twitter locks embassy account? Yeah, did you see Twitter banned their U.S. embassy account? Did they? Yeah. That's amazing. Uh, it's about time. Yeah. Do you think? Do you think maybe they're starting to listen? Because we talked about that last we week. Did. Maybe. Um, yeah, I'm, you can I'm send over articles. That. It's fine. We can Google those. Thank you yeah. so much. Uh, Ross Wolf, did you see that the U.S. State Department website no longer calls China a threat to global security, or 5G security is no longer a policy issue? Uh, I actually read something that said the exact opposite of that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, I think there might be some cross lines there. Yeah. I look into that. Um, Andy Brecky Dios thirteen. Did you see the CCP will ever? Do you think that CCP will ever be knocked out of power? No. Uh, what do you think the main reasons will be? If so, do you believe that Western countries will take China more seriously in the future? Yes, now, but just now, just mm. starting now. Yeah. Before, absolutely not. Yeah. Uh, but no, China will not be. CCP the CCP will not one. Be you you have to understand what absolute control they have over the population yeah. there. The, the people have no say. I mean, no... it's like asking, you know, in North Korea is the yeah, Kim, Kim, the, same thing. The, the Kim family, are they going to be knocked out of power? Right. Well, unless they run out of them, no. You know, no. that's the thing. Right. If they all die of gout or something. Um, Which they won't. Like no. Food. Um, I mean, them. No, it's because he eats too much cheese. He gets gout. Oh, yeah. He you does. Know? Yeah. He loves, he's addicted to cheese. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's that. just one of those things. When you've got that much control over your population and you censor the the media so much and you co-opt foreign uh, forces to boost your local propaganda and stuff it's very difficult and when somebody from china tries to speak out against china they get absolutely destroyed and their family lives get destroyed and you have to understand what you're fighting against is something um, insurmountable so it's very difficult to ever topple that kind of power it's it's impossible really so when you're in china you have to kind of either go with the flow completely ignore politics carry on with your daily life that's your best way of survival and so there just isn't enough incentive for people to rise up you know what i mean as long as they can still live 
a life, you know, and guo as they say, which is like to um, pass the day. Mm -hmm. So as long as people can pass the day and kind of do the activities they want to do, have meals, hang around with family, get drunk, do whatever stuff that they want to do, right. that's fine. But don't think outside of that. Don't get too ambitious. Don't no. try to, to reach for the stars because that's when you start to really hit problems. Yeah, we yeah. got we to gotta rip through this. Okay. Um, Jonathan Case, after watching the podcast a couple weeks ago, I watched some old videos of early 90s South Africa. How South Africa didn't go to war was amazing. Because yeah. you Good. talked about that. Uh, 50027, what mm -hmm. part of South Africa are you from? Was it bad like Alexandria or nice like Free State? Uh, I was born in Cape Town, but when I was about 10, uh, we moved to Johannesburg and ended up living in Chartwell, right near to Deep Slurt, which is probably like the most violent township or whatever in the area. Mm. I've seen a lot in South Africa, both good and bad, but uh, it's, it's a very tough uh, country to live in and um, it's something I'll talk about more in my videos coming up because it's about time I've been repressing this for a long time mm. Owen Prescott says Tim Poole got the Chinese vaccine <laughs> I don't believe that but um, thanks for bringing him back up in conversation <laughs> okay DeJavo. if he did we're gonna have some words yeah yeah uh, DeJavo says I'm waiting for a Sputnik Sinovac cocktail <laughs> Nice. Yeah, that'll be interesting. Uh, Massive fins, uh, people lying about the Biden and China. Uh, his intel just said when it comes to espionage, they are an adversary vowing to counter Beijing's illegal, unfair, aggressive actions. I read that as well. Thank you. It's good. Jake Asaurus, love the vid vids. A tip for demonetized censorship. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you so much. Um, Jonathan Lau, heard of Yuri Bezmonov before? And that uh, rings a bell. It does, definitely. Don't know who it is. Bell. Uh, Mo Behar. Mm. Thank you. Magnum Beef. Just got the end of the podcast. Thanks for all you do. Thank you. Thank you. Garhent. I, for one, welcome our Chinese overlords in the Chinese provinces of America. <laughs> Good for you, okay. mate. Yeah. Um, Spiffy Rax says, Seamilk, your hat brim is magical, very sci fi. It's a very. It's, it's a, uh, special effects artists hate this one trick <laughs> that I have. It's just to show off it's transparency, which the Chinese government doesn't have. <laughs> <laughs> there we have a reason for it. Though. Yeah. Uh, it's hearing song. I am a Tibetan living in the U.S. So we've been continue. So this is a re here's a real Tibetan. Yeah, exactly. Oh, and <laughs> uh, I am a Tibetan living in the U.S. So we've been and continue to be persecuted by the CCP. There is no way my people would root for the CCP. There's no way Ergen Schelling is a Tibetan. Definitely a Wuma. Yeah. And then Ergen Schelling says, "I am trolling, Searing. Imagine getting fooled by a blatant troll." Either way. Winston and I just benefited quite a lot from that conversation, so I very much appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. Sneaky Joltion. Uh, at work, a co co-worker talked about how someone moved from the USA to South Africa and wondered why they do that. They said they should stay there because it's a great area. Uh, maybe most people aren't aware of South Africa. Yeah. No, it's, yeah. it's a stupid move. <laughs> yeah. Anyway. I'll talk about that later in the future. Sure. Guys, uh, again, apologies for the long Q&A, but we really do want to try and answer your questions. Yeah, we don't miss any of them. We do love engaging with you. That's the biggest benefit of the show for us is, is because we hope that we can help inform you at the very least entertain you. And, um, you know, guys, oh, yeah, I know who uh, yeah, Yuri Bezmanov is. He's the guy who's got that famous speech about undermining the Western yeah. democracy and yeah, stuff. Yeah, now we know. Just another name. Yeah. All right. Guys, can't wait to see you in the next one. Tomorrow, I've got a video that uh, focuses on Elisa Chi, which mm -hmm. is, as you all know, a very um, big soft power push from China. It's not... It's not negative. It's not a bad thing. No. But it is something that it's not what is portraying itself to be. Hmm. If that makes sense. I'll be talking about that. And uh, we can't wait to see you in the check rest out, of our check videos. Check out my video I released today. If you want to know why Chinese people have weird, crazy English Yeah, words. if you kind of like the whole uh, t-shirt thing in the beginning. That, yeah, that ties like, into like that, yeah. his. And if you want to... Honestly, I keep saying this. If you haven't seen it already, though, please check out the video I did about the foreign traitors working for the Chinese government. Question mark. It's a question, not a, an actual statement. Mm -hmm. That's how you get around these things. Um, um, there's three more, but I'm going to put them in the next next week. Okay. So right. I'm putting them into our next week thing. So yeah. tune in next week and you'll get your we, question answered. Yeah. We have um, three three super chats, which we will ask next time. Don't worry. We will not forget you. Thank you so down. much, guys. Cool. Can't wait to see you in the next one. Have a wonderful day and uh, an even better weekend, which is yeah. coming up soon. And we can't wait to see Love you. And until then, you know the drill. As always, stay awesome. And I want